Thank you, Latricia. Do not forget to hit the like button. Yes, thank you. How are y'all doing tonight? Just wanted to stop in for a quick one, too. I'm put some lotion on. My hands are a little ashy. What's up, Jazzy and Eartha and Jessica? What's up, y'all? I'm going to wait for a few people to get in here. A few more people to get in here, then we're going to get started. I might be going out later. I'm not sure. Because one of my friends, <laughs> she got a lot going on. Hey, I know she's watching. <laughs> hey, April. Hey, Cream, 7180. What's up, Eminem? Brussels No Sprouts, what's up? Barb Meets World, yes. What's up, Latoya? And Drinks With D, higher up. What's up, Diva? Yes. What's up, Montrash Jones? What's up? Chantel, Miss Pittsburgh, Empress Energy, Miss Fancy Pants, what's up? Miss Too Early, yes. Chanel on everything. I know that's right. What's up, C. John the Gamer? Nick and Sarah? Yes. What's up, y'all? What's up? Child, we're going to get into some mess tonight. Just a little mess. Just a little one-two. You know what I'm saying? I got a little cocky on deck. Got a little cocky on deck. Got a little water on deck. You know what I'm saying? Am I frozen? We being messy tonight. <laughs> we being messy tonight. We're going to be a little messy. <laughs> Just a little messy. Not a whole lot of messy. Okay? Well, that's kind of good. What's up, Renee? Maybe the mic is on. <laughs> okay, it's gonna get messy. <laughs> Just a little mess. Just a little. We gonna we gonna we gonna tug. We gonna tug on a couple of wigs tonight. Just a couple. <laughs> not a whole rip. Not a whole, you know, we're just going to do a little, just a little shift. <laughs> okay? We're going to shift a couple of wigs tonight. Because, you know, a couple of wigs need to be, need to be shifted. <laughs> okay? I'm tired of the people playing in my face. Yes. Okay? All right, y'all. Let's go ahead and get started. What do y'all want to start off with first? Who we got? Who we got on? Who we got on the hit list tonight? Megan Fox. We got Megan Fox. We can start out. You know what? We can start out what I talked about last night. What's up, Miss Diaz? Yes. Um. I kind of we I, I, for those who don't know I, I was on Make It Make Sense uh, channel last night. We had a panel. It was me, um, Gabor, um, Jamie, and of course Make It Make Sense. And we had a, it was a fun time. I wasn't even ready to get off of the live, honestly. Um, so some of if you were in the live last night, some of this we already talked about. Um, but I wanted to talk about. The was I love Gabor. Gabor is a key key to me, child. I love Gabor. Um, so some of this stuff we already talked about last night. The RHOP uh trailer, the reunion, it came out. We know that sometimes you can't take these trailers or the you know. You can't take sometimes you can't take these things at face value because you'll be thinking one thing is gonna happen and the way that they edit the 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 you know the trailers, it can be completely different. However, there were some parts of the of the trailer that I wanted to discuss. The first one is Ashley Darby. I think it's getting I think that Ashley, this is Ashley's last stop. I do. 
I don't know if y'all noticed. Did y'all notice that uh, Kiriana, is that her name? Is that her name, Kiriana? You know I can't pronounce her name. Wendy's friend, did y'all notice that when Wendy's friend came out, she wasn't sitting at the end? She was sitting between Candace and Wendy. Did y'all catch that, T? How are you a friend of the show who barely was even on this season, Quiet as It's Kept? Go back and watch the trailer. It's real quick. If you watch the trailer, you will see that Cariana, there we go, Cariana, was in the middle of Candace and Wendy. And, we, and Ashley was still sitting at the end. I saw, I saw somebody trying to say online, oh, they probably had it that way because of the trains. Girl, boo. Girl. No, they let Ashley know, girl, move out the way. I'm with my girls and we all need space. Hello? When the queen come through, pour like the red say, move out the way. Hello? How many times I'm going to say? Hello? I think, Ashley, you in danger, girl. Also, did y'all catch that tea? When Ashley said that she, that she massages uh, uh, Michael's feet every night? Now, I'm trying to figure out if you and Michael are separated and you live at one address and he lives at another address, then how are you massaging his feet every night? Ashley and that man are not <laughs> getting a divorce. Ashley is not leaving Michael. I believe that Ashley and Michael both got together and they came up with this plan that in order for Michael not to appear on the show, we're going to just say that we're separated. I'm going to get another house. You're going to stay at the condo. And I also do believe, I believe it, I'm sorry, I believe that one of the reasons why he sued Candace for $2 million is so that he, he thought he was going to win and he was going to take that money and pay that house off. I really do believe it. I 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 don't care what nobody got to say. I think that's part of the reason why he sued Candace. I don't think Candace, I don't think that Ashley and Michael are getting a divorce. I think they are still together. I think they came up with a plan just so Michael wouldn't have to appear on TV or so they wouldn't have to hear NBC, the producer's mouths on why is he not appearing on TV? Why is he not over here? Well, we're separated. I really think that's what's going on with Ashley and Michael. She's not leaving that man. One, she's scared because she knows she can't afford that lifestyle without Michael. But I think I think Ashley I, and then remember a couple of well, not a couple of months ago. Remember about a month and a half ago, I came down to YouTube and I was talking about the video that she did after the reunion, basically saying, hey, guys, I gave it my all. You know, I tried to be as honest as possible as, you know, as much as I could. And I thought it was very strange. I don't keep up with Ashley like that outside of the show. Maybe Ashley does this every year after the reunion. But I thought it was very strange that after the reunion, she ran down to her Instagram page trying to give a, you know, trying to give a rundown or, you know, let the people know. I think Ashley knows that, girl, she's in danger. Hmm. Robin, I don't know who... Robin was talking about and low key quiet as it's kept. If you watch the episode, if you watch one of the episodes when they were in Mexico, what were they? Where were they at? I forgot where they where, where they were. When they gave a flat, when they gave, I felt like it was a farewell. When Ashley was talking about her birthdays, they it felt like they were like giving a montage of okay, this is Ashley's goodbye. Let's show her birthdays. Let's show her children, and then girl, this is this is it for her. And then with K Kiriana coming out and not even having to sit at the end, girl, Kiriana is a friend. 
And she was barely on this season, if we're going to be honest about it. So for, for Carriana to come out and not even sit at the end of the couch, but to sit in the middle of Wendy and Candace, to me, that says a lot also. <laughs> Y'all know Ashley is my girl. But Ashley, girl, you probably gone after this season. Um, Robin said something about that wasn't your, that wasn't his limp that that wasn't his limp dick on the screenshot. Let me tell y'all something. I don't know whose husband she was talking about. It don't even matter, girl. It don't even matter. It don't matter if it was Gordon, Chris, Eddie, Ike, or Ray. Robin couldn't put her mouth on me and say nothing. About nobody's husband, penis, nothing that have to do with a husband. Girl, we girl, were those the screenshots of your husband going down to the hotel, paying for a bitch room? And you got the nerve to talk about screenshots on my husband? Let's talk about the screenshots that have to do with your husband, Miss Robin Dixon. Let's talk about the screenshots of your husband going down to pay for some random woman's room because he just want to be, because he's just a nice guy. And just like we were saying last night on Mim's panel, Gabor brought it up. It just, the, it, it just goes to show how Juan does not give an F about Robin or their situation. The simple fact that Juan still didn't come to the reunion this year. Any other year, it's always Juan is at work. Juan is at work. Juan is at work. What's your, re your husband doesn't even want to support you. And here you go again, Robin, having to sit there by your lonesome and answer all the question while, while Juan ain't nowhere in sight. Nowhere in sight. Robin couldn't say a damn thing to me about me and my man. I don't give a damn. Robin could never say nothing about me or my man. Ever. Your husband is such of this, is, is this great guy that he's willing to drive to the other side of town, pay for this woman's hotel room, don't get no coochie at the end of the transaction, but he, he doesn't even support you like that, Robin. He can't even come down to the reunion and sit behind you and sit in the hot seat and sit in the hot seat for a few hours, a couple of hours. Robert can never say nothing to me. Not as it pertains to no man. I don't give a damn if my man was trifling too, just like hers. She couldn't say nothing. She could never say nothing to me. Girl, nothing. 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 Okay? Like nothing. Absolutely nothing. <laughs> and then Miss Mia. You know? Listen, y'all. But he's a nice guy. Right? That's what he said. He's a nice guy. You don't even want to support your wife. You don't even want to support your wife. But you want to convince us that you are such this great man that you were willing to drive from Baltimore, Maryland, or wherever they stay, <laughs> to whatever city in the DMV to pay for this lady's hotel room. <laughs> Girl, stop. And then you got Robin getting on TV in front of everybody who watches Watch, watch What Happens Live saying that she believed you. <laughs> But then you want to come down to the reunion talking about was that a screenshot of his of his penis? Girl, do you want to bring up screenshots, Miss Thing? <laughs> Anyways, Mia. Listen. Please don't get it twisted. I know that Mia is a hot ass mess. Mia, I still ain't forgot the way you did Wendy. 
low key the way you did your own friend Jackie since y'all been friends since y'all was 15 years old Mia is a hot ass mess with that being said Mia is going to make sure that she does not lose this check. Come hook or come crook. Bitch. <laughs> Bitch, let me tell y'all something. When I saw <laughs> when I saw Mia's boyfriend on the phone <laughs> and she made her husband speak to her boyfriend. I said, bitch. I said, what is going on? I said, not your boyfriend on FaceTime and your husband go right behind you and you making them speak to each other. I said, what the shit? And then when Mia girl, got on the, the, the stage and now her and Gordon are claiming that there's a possibility that there's a paternity issue involving their son. You know, Mia has a son from a previous relationship and then her and Gordon have two kids together, um, a, a boy and a girl. And they, I guess now questions of the paternity of their son has come up. I was saying last night on Mem's channel that even though it could be a scheme that Ty set up to come to us with the bullshit, and we know Mia will lie in a heartbeat, that it could, it, 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 it does, it could make sense. Because when you think about it, Mia and Gordon, um, you know, Gordon suffers from erectile dysfunction. I don't know how long has been going on. And we also know that Mia has had, I guess, for lack of a better word, permission to step outside of their marriage and have sex with other men. So it could be a possibility that, girl, if this was around the time that Mia was screwing somebody, girl, she slipped up and had, you know what I'm saying? It could be a possibility. <laughs> so I'm just saying that even though Mia is a lie, it's not too far-fetched that, girl, it could be a paternity issue, being that Mia had permission to go out there because Gordon couldn't please her in the bedroom. You know what I'm saying? Um, I don't want it to get to a point because this is one of the issues that we talk about all the time with Potomac. Like the girls just be lying and lying and lying and lying and lying, right? And it's like at some point it's like, Girl, we just don't want we just don't want to go down this road of just like Mia just lying just because she thinks that it's entertaining. You know what I'm saying? I think that's part of the reason why we're in the situ situation that we're in with Potomac because the girls just want to sit around and lie and not tell the truth. I don't think that. Um, thank you for the super chat, Vincent. Um, hey Rodney, I just got in. Before you go in, I had a music question. Maybe you can answer. Between topics, which Renaissance track is better, um, Church Girl or A H A H A P? What's A H A P? What's that? And Blackout, Freak Show, or Toy, Toy Soldier? I'm gonna say Freak Show over Toy Soldier, even though Toy Soldier is my jam. But Freak Show over Toy Soldier, and I don't know what H A H A P is. What's that? Um, but yeah, I just don't want to go down this road with Mia just telling lies because she thinks that it's entertaining. You know what I'm saying? Um, but other than that, I think that Mia did deserve. Oh, America has a problem. Oh, um, I would probably choose Church Girl. Probably Church Girl. Yeah. Um, but other than that, you know, I do believe that Mia did deserve first chair. Um, as much as Mia gets on our nerves, I feel like Mia was the one who worked the most this season. Um, you know, Andy, they will lie and say that the, the seats are usually for the women who have the most to talk about, but we know that's not the truth because if that's the case, Giselle shouldn't have been, it, it's been a couple of times Giselle shouldn't have been in the seat at all. Girl, pretty much seasons one through eight. Okay. <laughs> 
So we know that's not the truth, but you know that's what they'll say. Anyways, let's move on, y'all. All right, y'all. Megan Fox. You know, I don't keep up with Megan Fox like that. But I wanted to I wanted to play a clip of Megan Fox. <laughs> this is what she had to say. So listen to this. Megan Fox says, <laughs> okay, this is according to the Jasmine brand. In 2022, Megan Fox found herself at the center of a satanic cult allegations after revealing she and her significant other, music artist, uh, Machine Gun Kelly, consumed each other's blood on occasion for ritual purposes only. The revelation came after the Jennifer Bodies actress uploaded an Instagram post about her engagement to Machine Gun Kelly. Um, basically, she talked about them, you know, drinking each other's blood. Um, she did an interview, and this is what she had to say about the whole situation. Thank you, Latrice. Thank you for the super chat. Thank you so much. This is what she had to say. <laughs> now, believe it or not, I'm going to just listen to it. We're just going to play what she had to say. Just listen. Because she was low-key rapping some of y'all. She, she was low-key rapping some of y'all up quiet as it's kept. <laughs> I'm just going to be honest. Uh, quiet as it's kept. Megan was low-key rapping some of y'all girls up. <laughs> and some of y'all and some of y'all boys. Hello? <laughs> okay. It's just like that one time that I said I drink blood ritualistically. And then everybody was like, wow, she's into satanic rituals. Um, classic. But that was a very misunderstood thing. Uh -huh. Let me try to explain it. Hey, give us like, some context. Everything is a matter of like what you're accustomed to mm -hmm. or what is currently like socially acceptable or normal back in like the fifties even. How many times did you see like little boys would go out with like their little pop guns and they would cut their fingers and like be blood brothers, right? And they're like, we're best friends forever now. And they would like smush the blood together on their fingers. Uh huh. That's not satanic, right? That's normal and that's cute, that's sweet. That's like an innocent like- Little bond. Yeah. Now I have to be honest. I do recall some of y'all doing stuff like that, especially in the movies. That's what I'm saying. I, I'm just saying, we're not going to say and act like. <laughs> God, that's what I said, too. Don't get it twisted. I see where she's going. It's still, <laughs> it's still a no for me, but I see what she meant. <laughs> it's a no for me all the way around. Let me be very clear, okay? I'm not, I'm not swallowing nobody's blood at all, okay? Um... But I felt like she was telling, she's low-key on, I see what she's saying. It's a little bond between kids who love each other. They have a pure friendship. It's like that. <laughs> Except instead of rubbing your fingers together, the drop of blood goes in your mouth. And I don't know what why that becomes satanic. I understand people are like, it's not satanic, girl. It's just nasty. Girl, that's it. Girl, I get where you're going with this, Megan. I do. I, I'm on the train with you. But this is why I have to get off. Because, you know, we you you putting, you transferring blood between each other, right? Y'all think it's cute as little boys and little girls. Best friends for life, right? But, girl, I think it's just something a little different with you just, like, putting a drop, girl, like. You're like, it's a little nasty, Megan. It's a little nasty to hold your mouth open <laughs> and then drop some blood on your tongue and swallow it. I don't think that's the same thing, sister. Girl, I don't think that's the same thing, sister. But I get what you're trying to say, but it's not the same thing. I don't care what nobody say. Girl, open up your mouth and drinking blood is not the same thing, bitch. Is you a vampire, girl? girl are you one of the originals? <laughs> Girl, are you one of the originals? Hello? Let's finish what she had to say. Now, this is when Megan about to start rapping. <laughs> this is when Megan had me hollering. I said, oh, Megan, she read. Megan started, Megan started reading all y'all girls. Hello? And if, if you was y'all, you was y'all. If you not y'all, you ain't got nothing to worry about.
Hey, that's weird, but guess what I think is weird? I think it's weird that girls are out here letting guys come in their mouth and they don't know these guys. You're letting somebody put their sperm in your mouth and you don't know what he does. He doesn't even have a job. You met him on fucking Tinder. He's an entrepreneur or whatever. He's in a startup. And you just let him <laughs> sperm in your mouth. That's disgusting. That makes my back hurt. That makes me sweaty. So fuck you. You're so offended that I got a drop of Machinga Kelly's blood in my mouth. You have Brandon from Silicon Valley's sperm in your mouth. He didn't even buy you a nice drink. I'm crying. <laughs> what is so gross about what I did with my soulmate? You guys are out here letting strangers... Come on, you. This is disgusting. Bitch. I'm going to say she wraps y'all up. <laughs> Megan said, you can say a fuck thing to me about what I do with me and my soul. Man, y'all hoes out here meet niggas in the club, girl, after a $10 drink and letting them come in your mouth. <laughs> Megan said, you can't say a damn thing to me about what I do with my soul, mate. Y'all meet the man in the club and letting them come on your face. You can't say a damn thing to me. Girl, these niggas ain't got no jobs. Girl, they talking they got a startup come. I said Megan was reading the girls. Girl, what the hell you? I said Megan. Girl, Megan. Megan said, you can't say a damn thing to me. Megan said, y'all mean these niggas in the club going home with them and swallowing, girl. <laughs> y'all mean these niggas in the club after one after a drink. And some of y'all ain't even getting drinks. She said, girl, they ain't even buying y'all no drinks. And y'all going home with them and letting them come in your mouth. <laughs> I said, what the fuck? <laughs> girl, I said, oh. But here we go. <laughs> Multiple things can be true at the same time. Megan, I'm not swallowing nobody's blood. And bitch, she write about wrapping y'all up about, girl, meeting these niggas in the club and letting them come in your mouth. And Megan said, my man got a job. <laughs> That's what she said. Megan said, my man has two jobs, bitch. <laughs> okay? Y'all don't know these y'all don't know these niggas from the next nigga. <laughs> okay. I said, oh, Miss Megan ain't playing no games with the kids. <laughs> and when I say girls, I'm talking about some of the I'm talking about some of the, uh, the gays. She's talking about y'all too. Hello? Some of y'all done got real quiet in the comment section. <laughs> oh! All right, y'all. <laughs> oh, listen to this. Let's move on, y'all. Listen to this right here. Hold up. This is according to TMZ. Karen Huger <laughs> reeked of booze after crash, according to cops. Karen Huger was swaying and had a strong odor of alcohol on her breath following her frightening crash Tuesday night in Potomac, Maryland. This according to the police report. According to the report obtained by TMZ, officers noted that the Real Housewives of Potomac cast member also had slurred speech and bloodshot eyes when they arrived on scene. And they say she didn't answer when the cops asked her twice how much she had to drink. <laughs> officers also noted she had two closed bottles of alcoholic beverage Stella inside her vehicle. The report asked that while cops thought that Karen appeared to be intoxicated, she declined to undergo a field sobriety test or breathalyzer. Let me tell y'all something. <laughs> I said last night on Mim's channel, those who were there, I said, I bet you Karen had a bottle between her legs and a bottle in her Chanel purse. Those who were in the live last night, did I not say Karen had a bottle between her legs? And I said she had a bottle in her Chanel purse. Did I not say that? <laughs> Did I not say that? Y'all girls <laughs> don't listen to me. I be trying to tell y'all. But the real gag is, girl, ain't nothing wrong with Stella Rose. But girl, Karen, girl, usually the girls get what they can afford, right? And I know, like, Karen, how you, girl, 
Don't get it twisted. I still drink 1800. Some of the girls turn their nose up at 1800. I think 1800 is okay. Okay. But I also drink 1800 because I ain't got no money to be going to the liquor store spending $50, $60 on a bottle, a bottle of tequila every time I want to look taste of tequila. You see what I'm saying? So I do what my money allows me to do. <laughs> okay. Karen, I'm not saying just because you start to get money, your taste buds change because that's just not the truth. But Karen, girl, you still walking around here, girl, as a millionaire drinking Stella Rose? <laughs> Now, if I was making the money that Karen made, I probably would be walking around here, girl, getting my Casamigos every time I went to the liquor store. But, girl, you still walking around here, girl, buying Stella Rose for nine ninety seven? I said, okay, Karen. Uh, I'm not judging. I'm not judging. I'm not judging. I'm not judging. But, you know, like I said, the girls do what they money can do. You know what I'm saying? But I said that Karen had a bottle in her uh, between her legs and a bottle in her purse. I said it. I said it. I said it. I said it. Baby, Karen, you really up, up. You really did, sister girl. You did. And I want to say something. Shout out to Feel Good. Phil, are you in the room? Anyways, shout out to Feel Good. He asked me a question last night about basically kind of like he basically said, Basically, in a nutshell, these were not his exact words, but he said something along the lines of basically me coming to like, you know, be Rodney Pope and fix Karen's situation. Let me just say something. Karen drinking and driving is bad for any of us. Right. But the truth of the matter is Karen is a 60 year old woman. Karen's not 20. Karen's not 30. Karen's not 40. Karen's not 50. Karen is 60 years old. If you're in your 20s and this happens, you're still going to be held accountable. Just like we were talking about the football player. I think his name is Henry Ruggs. He was drunk, unalive someone, ran into a girl and her dog in her car. She was trapped inside of a burning car. He has to go to prison. While it's sad all around, right? We still, I still, I'm speaking for myself. It's like, damn, he's 20 something years old. But you still have to go to prison, baby. You kill somebody. You see what I'm saying? Like, you can understand, because you're 20, you don't know, you don't have a lot of experience, but you still got to go to jail. Karen is 60. And also, let me say this too. This is another thing. The reason why it's easy to fix, <laughs> just listen to what I'm about to say. Listen to me before y'all start. It's easy to fix Karen's situation because of Karen's job and because Karen is a fan favorite. Karen, she did not kill anyone. Um, she didn't almost kill anyone. She was drunk. She was driving. I don't think anybody was on the road when she ran off of the street. So for Karen, Karen can go into her job next season, which is a Real Housewives of Potomac. And depending on how she comes across, she could still come out on top. Because one, Karen is a fan favorite. For example, Wendy or Candace, they would just be fucked. Y'all already don't like Karen, I mean Candace and Wendy. So if this were them, y'all would probably be marching the streets because this is all you need <laughs> to go after them on top of you already not locking them, right? Y'all not going to do that for Karen. You see what I'm saying? Karen, all Karen got to do is come back next season, drop a couple of tears, say she's sorry, and I can guarantee you because Karen is already a fan favorite, the fans are going to forget that it even happened. That's exactly what's going to happen. If you go to the comment sections on some of the blogs, some of the people are already saying, oh my God, y'all are dragging this. They think the coverage that Karen is getting is already too much. Look at Karen so far. 
I will come down to YouTube and I would say, Karen be lying, y'all. And some of you will get into my comment section and swear that I just hated this woman because I was telling y'all she Karen do be lying. I don't have no I don't have no issues with Karen, but Karen be lying. <laughs> okay. Karen be lying. And because I used to say Karen lies, people swore that I hated that lady. Because those are her fans coming her coming to her defense. This is not something that we have not heard of before. We knew Karen had a DUI. We, knew, we know Karen's relationship with alcohol is not the best. Sharice has told us. Robin has told us. Giselle has told us. But also the cast, they let it slide. They don't really go there with Karen when it comes to her drinking. They might bring it up and then they'll bring it back. The fans... They won't say anything because they love Karen. So Karen coming back next season, Karen ain't really even really got to do a lot of work, quite as it's kept, because she's loved by the fans. Again, if this was Candace or Wendy, they would be fucked. And y'all would be out in the streets with picket signs in front of Bravo asking for their heads. So that's why I say with Karen, she ain't really got to do a lot. Because they're already, they're already online talking about it's team too much. Y'all still reporting on this? Y'all still talking about this? The, the Karen fans are already mad. The first day, okay. The second day, they, was, they started getting a look. Now, they pissed off. Because they don't understand why we're still talking about Karen. We're still, we're still talking about Karen because Karen is a drunk. And this is Karen's second DUI. And girl, usually it, for Karen, girl, it might be the third one, might be three strikes, you're out. She's been, she's been getting lucky. She ain't had nothing but the universe on her side. Because Karen that got drunk twice ain't hurt nobody. Henry Ruggs, he got, he got behind the wheel and killed somebody. Hello? So I feel like that's I feel like that's the difference between Karen and some of the other ladies. Karen again is an easy fix. Y'all not going I I can guarantee you. Next season if Karen comes back and if I start tugging on Karen's wig, some of the girls are going to be pissed off. I can guarantee you cuz y'all are already pissed off at me for calling Karen a liar in the past and that's exactly what she used to do. Now, I also used to acknowledge, yes, Karen, Karen lies, but her lies don't affect other people. You know what I'm saying? Like, Karen and I heard on some Giselle stuff, like, oh, he made me go to his bedroom. I'm just saying, just watch. I'm t season nine is going to start. Karen may squeeze out a couple of tears, and the LaDoms are going to be pissed off if people don't drop it. If it was Candace or Wendy... Who came back? <laughs> she blocked me season one for calling her liar. Karen is a liar. If that was Candace or Wendy, who had a second DUI, bitch, y'all will be, y'all know, y'all will be off with their heads. They probably couldn't even come back to the show season nine. Because as soon as this happened, y'all will already be tagging Andy. Y'all will already be starting petitions. Y'all will probably be standing in front of Bravo headquarters. That's what y'all would do if it was Candace and Wendy. <laughs> Karen, some of y'all just gonna let it go. <laughs> y'all know I'm telling the truth. Sometimes in some, in some cases, public opinion means a lot. And in this case, with the housewives, with the housewives, sometimes public opinion means a lot. If it's too much noise, they might do something about it. Karen, depending on how Karen comes back next season, Karen going to be all right. Hello? Sounds like colorism. <laughs> Karen refused that breathalyzer and filled sobri sobriety test because she knows she's she going to be lying about it all next season. I don't think mama is going to be fully transparent about it. I hope she will, though. Thank you. I don't think she will either.
And I'm going to be right down here tugging on her wig. Let Karen come back and play in my face. Let Karen come back next season and play in my face. Let her. Y'all know it's colorism, girl. You know the girls don't want to admit it, but girl, you know it's colorism. I'm just saying, y'all don't want to admit it, but that's the truth. Karen is an easy fix. Wendy and Candace, y'all will be off with their heads. Those girls probably wouldn't even be able to make it to season nine without without them just. That, that, I can guarantee you, if this was Wendy or Candace, they wouldn't even get contracts. It would be so much chaos and confusion online. They would have to just say, you know what, girl, we're gonna we're gonna have to let you sit out season nine. You can't even come back. That's exactly what would happen. Karen going to be all right because Karen is a fan favorite. And the people love Karen. She ain't got to do too much. They will make petitions, baby. Girl, it, will be, it will be a mess. Y'all, y'all don't want Candace. Let me shut up. I only feel like going down that road. Okay, let's move on. <laughs> let's move on. Okay. Mm -mm. Okay, y'all. So Dr. Simone opens up about why she brought up Quad's niece. During the marriage and medicine reunion and issued an apology. It wasn't the intent to re-injure. It was to drive home the point. <sighs> hey, Carolina. All right, listen. We're going to listen to what Dr. Simone had to say, okay? We're going to listen to what Dr. Simone had to say. <laughs> Let's listen to it. Uh, I don't move in a way that I would ever want to harm anybody as a result of filming the show. Absolutely. I see you getting emotional, um, Dr. Simone. Why is that? Um... And, you know, I made the comment, and um, as inappropriate as it was, it wasn't my intent to injure her or anybody in her family. It wasn't the intent to be injured, was to drive home the point. Um, but again, I have nothing but love for Quad. If we never speak again, and that's what I told her the next the next day, literally, if we never speak again, I still have nothing but love for her. Um, and again, for people to paint this narrative that we would try to push any one individual off of the show is a bad narrative. Each individual owns her position on the show, and she is the only one who keeps her job or loses her job. Mm -hmm. um, thank you. So. Um, if, and I'm, you know. If Quan is watching now, is there anything you have to say to her? I'm sorry if I injured you or anybody in your family. That comment I made. We've all made mistakes on this platform, and I'm, I own that. That was my mistake. Okay. So before we even get into my commentary, I just want to say, because I know some of the girls swore from now when you give a commentary that. That goes again, girl, they swapping out. Dr. Simone has been one of my faves since the beginning. When I started watching Marriage to Medicine, Dr. Simone was my girl. I didn't care for nobody else but Dr. Simone, okay? Dr. Simone couldn't do no wrong in my eyes. It was one season where I did stop liking Dr. Simone. I forgot what season. 
I was like, oh, Dr. Simone, you're, you're kind of nasty, <laughs> right? But, you know, I was mad, and then I came back around. And then, of course, you know, Dr. Heavenly is my girl now, and I love me some qual with her dramatic ass. I don't really dislike anybody on the show. The only person I really don't see it for is Phaedra, <laughs> okay? <laughs> um... Dr. Simone, girl. <laughs> Dr. Simone, the reason why I was rolling my eyes when you were talking is because you can't even just fully take, take accountability. When she said, I even spoke to her the next day, and did y'all hear her say when she said she spoke to Quad the next day, and if they speak again, they speak, if they don't, they don't, she still got love for her. Like, girl, that's you still trying to like, how are you, how are you, let's just call a thing a thing. And I don't want to sound insensitive, but girl, you tried to bring up a point and the point was to mention a dead child that died in the back of Quad's home in her swimming pool. It's not if. It's not if I hurt your family. It's not if you were hurt. You did. You did. It's not no if you did anything. You did. And it was nasty. Because even at the time when you were trying to drive the point home, Quad was telling you, Simone, stop. Simone, stop. And you kept going. So, you know, Simone says she was sorry. Simone says that, you know, if she hurt them, she's, you know, she's apologetic. But the thing that really had me looking at, looking at my nose, turning my nose up at Simone is when she was like, well, you know, and I told her the next day, if we talk, we talk. If we don't, we don't. But we still, like, girl, how do you say some shit like that after you brought up a dead child, and then the next day you say, I told her, if we talk, we talk, if we don't, we don't, but I still got love for her. Girl, what the fuck? <laughs> you brought up my dead niece, and now you got the nerve to tell me the next day, if we talk, we talk, if we don't, we don't, but I still got love for you. You brought up my dead relative. I didn't bring up yours. And then you want to play in our face about not icing out quiet. See, this is a problem that I have with all reality TV girls. While I do have to, while I do have to say that we don't know the ins and outs. Well, let me read the super chat, y'all. Thank you, M. Is it M easy? No, her energy was way uh, was way different. At the beginning of that interview until Carla started giving her a little bit. She tried it. Oh. Thank you. Woo child, the ghetto. She tried to shade Quad by saying we all make mistakes on this platform in our own mind. More shade about Quad and accountability. There we go. This is the thing with these reality TV stars. Yes, I do realize that these girls and boys, they shoot for hours, days, weeks, months, right? And they reduce all of this footage down to a 45-minute episode. And I think I heard someone say that each week, like, I forgot who said it, but I remember somebody saying that each week, that, that week's worth of shooting filming they condensed that down to 40 they, they condensed that down for the show so each week of filming is the show i don't know if that's true or not or across the board for all reality shows so i get that we don't know a lot of stuff there's a lot of things that are happening that we're not privy to there are a lot of conversations and scenes that are being shot that we don't get to see right so they do know more than us because they are actually experiencing what's going on. They're there. 
But it comes a time where y'all gonna have to stop playing in the viewer's face because I think that some of them think that we're still in the inception of reality TV. Like at this point, the viewers, we pretty much know how these reality TV shows work. It's not like at the beginning where you were supposed to pretend that there's not a camera around. We're supposed to pretend that we're just, you know, having normal conversations, right? Girl, we in 10, 15, 16, 20 seasons on some of these reality shows. So when y'all try to pull this game of, oh, no one's trying to ice her out, girl, y'all are doing the work of the producers. Y'all are doing the work of Bravo. That's what y'all are doing. Now, I get it. You can't get on there and say, oh, girl, the reason why we were trying to push her out because girl, NBC actually wanted to fire her. But so I know they can't throw NBC under the bus, but that's what y'all do. That's what y'all did. Quiet as it's kept, if we're gonna be if we're gonna be keeping all the way 100, y'all really thought that Phaedra was gonna come in and save the day. And so therefore y'all thought y'all didn't need y'all didn't need quad no more. So y'all were gonna get rid of quad and Phaedra was gonna take her place, and then y'all brought Sweet Tea in to replace Dr. Contessa. Y'all also thought that with Sweet Tea and Dr. G coming back. Y'all thought that Quad was going to be on TV fighting Sweet Tea over Dr. G. And so when that didn't happen, y'all were stuck. And then when Phaedra showed she wasn't giving y'all nothing, that fucked y'all up too. Yes, y'all were trying to ice Quad out. That's exactly what happened. That's exactly what happened. It's no if, ands, buts about it. And now y'all want to play this game of, oh, like the viewers don't know what's going on. Like we're just some, like, like we're some idiots. Girl, we don't watch enough reality TV to know what's going on. And Simone Quad is just kept there's too many people that say that your hand be in the cookie jar the most. It really is insulting our intelligence. It really is. It's like, girl, y'all know we know what y'all doing. <laughs> like, y'all do know that we know how this works now. Y'all don't have to pretend, oh, we can't break the fourth wall. Girl, we know producers, we know producers are on set. We know that when y'all are sitting there shooting a scene, girl, there are people behind you. We know there are producers behind y'all. We know this is a produced reality TV show. This is not season one of Atlanta. Girl, this is season 10 of Married to Medicine, season 16 of Real Housewives of Atlanta, season 13 of Real Housewives. Like, the, we know how this works now. You can't play in our faces and then tell us it's something we know that it's the complete opposite. Girl, this is not the real, right. Like, and I think that's the frustrating thing. Like, y'all gonna stop playing in my face. We know exactly what's going on. And y'all know what's going on, too. Anyways. <laughs> I don't want, I don't want, you know what? I don't have no problem with um, sweet, uh, sweet Tea. But I don't want Sweet Tea to come back. Sweet Tea's not a good fit for the, for the group. She's not. Sweet Tita said 55,000 times that she ain't got nothing in common with these women. She said, I do. <laughs> Sweet Tita said 55,000 times she ain't got nothing in common with these women. She said it. You know what I want to say? I do want to say this. I want I want us to stop thinking I want us to stop thinking that just because someone appears on reality TV, 
that automatically makes them a reality TV star. <laughs> I want us to stop thinking that just because someone appears on reality TV, that means that they should stay there. Because I think what happens, for example, like in Sweet Tea's situation, there are people out there who like Sweet Tea. Shout out to y'all. There are people out there who hate Sweet Tea. Shout out to y'all. Right? I just don't think Sweet Tea is a good fit for this show. She's just not. She's just not. Sweet T knows that she's not a good fit for this show. She has nothing in common with these ladies. Everybody that appears on reality TV, it's almost like a job hiring you. And then you are the job realizing down the road that mm, this, is, this probably wasn't a good fit. It happens at jobs all the time. You will get hired for the job. You will get hired for the position. And then in probably three, four months down the road, you start to realize, like, I don't know if this was the, I don't know if I should have, I don't know if I should have taken this job. The, the employer starts to realize, maybe I made a mistake at hiring that person. Maybe I should have hired someone else. Everybody that comes across our TV screens on reality TV, it does not make them a reality TV star. And it does not mean that they are good for reality TV. Thank you, Brittany. I wish Quad was strong enough to just leave the show. The constant apologizing is cringy. It's clear they really don't want her around. They know she needs to be there. That's why she's treated. That's why they treat her like shit. Exactly. I wish Quad was in a great financial position where she could, where she had other stuff going on. Where if she walked away, girl, I, girl, that's what that's a girl. I girl, the way they would have had to kiss my ass a long time ago. All of them. I'm not about to keep. I'm not about to keep apolog apologizing to y'all because y'all ain't apologized to me. Simone, you still ain't apologized for saying that 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 Quad was out here sleeping with a contractor and giving out coochie for countertops. You said your big ass at that table, right with Toya, and don't and I don't give a damn. When, please don't think that Toya and Simone are that close to the point where Simone doesn't even want to be friends with Quad because it'll piss off Toya and Toya did not know that conversation that was about to be had at that table. Even though Toya tried to act like she didn't know, go, what happened? Huh? What? You know what the fuck is going on. When her Quad, when her Contessa and Simone sat at that table, Simone, Toya knew exactly what was going on. It's okay. It's okay for y'all to sit at a table and say that Quad is out here sleeping with a married man. It's okay for y'all to sit around and say that Quad is a hoe. But Lord forbid Quad say you cheating on your husband. The truth of the matter is we already know when it comes to a woman and her reputation, one of the quickest ways to ruin it is to call her a hoe. And y'all know that in some cases, that's unfair. Some of them do be hoes. But in some cases, we know that's unfair. So if y'all want to walk around and, hear say, and say that Quad is sleeping with married men and Quad is sleeping with a contractor, don't get mad when Quad come back and say you fucking around on Eugene. Because guess what? Let's not start in the middle. Let's start at the beginning. If you wouldn't have said that I was around here sleeping with a contractor and sleeping with a married man, then I wouldn't have said that you were sleeping with, uh, sleeping with a nigga in the neighborhood. Hello? <laughs> And on top of that, yes, they say that Quad made great investments. I tried to tell the people that. I remember Quad said that she is good with her money. I had a conversation with a friend. Hey, friend. I had a conversation with a friend. And I was like, I think it's unfair to just sit here and say that Quad is just some dumb bimbo who don't know what she's doing with her money. Quad had already told us that she has a nice portfolio. And then... Heavenly came down to the reunion this year and said that Quad makes great investments.
Girl, if I was quiet, girl, I, I couldn't do it. Y'all would have had to, y'all would have, y'all would have to suck my asshole a long time ago. I really wanted quiet to go to go to that reunion this year. What's up? <laughs> Hey, no, come on, make it make sense. I wouldn't know. I'm almost a virgin. You school with me. Here you go. He's messy. Hey, Mims. That's that. That's my friend, y'all. <laughs> yes. I tried to tell the people. The people don't like to. The people don't like to listen to me. I tried to tell the people that Qua was good with her money. And the people don't like to listen. And Heavenly came and told y'all at the reunion that Quad was good with her money. Hello? Hey, make it make sense? <laughs> hmm. I ain't gonna say who. Hello? I think that's the thing, right? They all lie and tell stories. I think that's one of the things that pisses me off because they do all lie and tell stories, but they act like it's just quad. Yes, quad gonna repeat some shit. Yes, quad gonna say some shit. But the point is, all of y'all do it. Like I think that that's my biggest thing. So stop trying to act like it's just quad <laughs> when all of y'all do it. <laughs> like literally, all of y'all do it. The only person that doesn't do it is Jackie because she gets heavily to do her dirt <laughs> to get her dirt up. But <laughs> well, all the girls get on there and tell a story here or there. They were or they repeat some shit that they heard. They all do it. That's why I felt like it was unfair. For Quad, because they people try to make it seem as though Quad is the only one that has her hand in mess. And Quad is not the only one that has her hands in mess. It's all of them. Quad makes a decent salary for that show. That's why I don't blame her for coming. I don't blame her for wanting the money, but I don't mind. Baby, the way I would have, girl, the way, let me say something. The way I would have went to that reunion, and girl, we would have had to just go toe-to-toe. -to -toe. We would have had to just go toe-to-toe. -to -toe. Quad really went to that reunion and was just on some, you know. I'm here. I'm apologetic. Girl, Toya would have got a piece. Simone would have got a piece. Jackie would have got a piece. Heavenly would have got a piece. Dr. Alicia, if you open up your mouth, you're going to get a piece too. <laughs> okay. Phaedra, you're going to get a piece. And if y'all bring me back next season, y'all bring me back next season. If you don't, then you don't. <laughs> I keep telling y'all, that's why Heavenly act the way that she act, because Heavenly don't really need the job. <laughs> she wants the job. The money is good. I'm sure because of her being on the show, there are certain things that have that have happened for Heavenly and the other ladies, Simone, Jackie, right? Them being on the show, it has it has afforded them certain opportunities, right? But you know, I don't think that their lifestyle will completely change if they stop the show. That's why Heavenly don't mind getting down or cussing that cussing their asses out and acting crazy. Because heaven is going to tell you, my man has two jobs, okay? And bitch, I don't need this money. I want the money, okay? It's cute when my direct deposit hit. Hello? <laughs> Quad didn't go into Sweet Tea. She didn't. I think the reason why Quad didn't really lay into Sweet Tea is because I don't think Quad wanted to look like she was fighting over a man. Because even if Quad and Sweet Tea, even if Quad had every reason to curse Sweet Tea out, the narrative would have been Quad is still in love with Dr. G. That Quad is bitter. Quad won't let it go. I guarantee you that's the narrative that would have been pushed. Even if, even if Sweet Tea had probably cursed out Quad and Quad cussed her back, the first thing people were gonna say is, Oh, you just still mad, you want Dr. G, you jealous, you hateful, you bitter. That's what they would have said. 
even though she left Dr. G. <laughs> they will still say she's bitter. Because there was a couple of times at the reunion, I know she wanted to get Sweet Tea together. Yes, the, the, that's true. Kwa was on an apology tour. She low, though Kwa was on an apology tour, she low key came out on top because the fans still not seeing it for the girls. And that, that's where the girls messed up. They, they overplayed their hands because they thought because they thought that they thought that quad was going to just be pushed out easily. And that's not the case. They look y'all look like mean girls. And what people need to realize is people don't like mean girls. And when it looks like when it looks like it's one against three, four, five, six. Nobody likes for it, it, it. Even if it looks like y'all are bullying somebody, the people are not going to like it. Yeah, I think I will say this much. I, you know, I love Dr. Simone. I love Dr. Jackie. And I love, I even love, you know, Dr. Evelyn is my girl, but Doc, I feel like it's time for Dr. Jackie to go. And that's another thing. Yeah, doc, it's time for Dr. Jackie to go. Dr. Simone, she can go too. It re they really do. It's time. They don't, they, I don't, I, that's what, like, I don't, I don't, I don't know who, I don't know. They messed up this season. Come on out on these Atlanta streets. I need to come to Atlanta because it's a couple of places I want to come up there and come uh, come out there and eat. Girl, you, know, you know, and I still I ain't gonna lie. Girl, let me shut up. <laughs> okay, Doctor Jackie clocking her patients PTO. Okay, and she ain't got nothing to do with it. I think marital medicine is going going into the wrong direction too. Girl, now we Giselle is mean and constipated, but but she has fans. Thank you, make it make sense. She does. The pe some of the people love um Giselle. Even though, girl, can I say something? Let, let me say something about, and we I'm gonna say this again. I'm gonna say this again in the reunion review. When I once I realized what the theme was, let me just say this before we get started. All the ladies looked nice. I didn't look at one person and think that, oh, you just look a mess. I really didn't. Now, there were, were there certain things on certain people I didn't like? Yes. But I didn't look at one person and be like, oh, girl, you look a mess. They say the theme for the reunion for Potomac was art gallery. That's what they say the theme was. Based off of the theme, I'm sorry. Based off of the theme, Giselle looked a mess. <laughs> sorry, not sorry. Based off of the theme of art gallery, Giselle looked a mess. Giselle was the only one that had on a dress, like I was telling the diva the other day on Twitter. <laughs> Giselle was the only one that had on a dress where girl she could have really took her heels off threw some Tory Burch sandals on and went to a barbecue look at all the other girls dresses and how they were dressed Giselle was the only one that had on a summer dress <laughs> Versace and all Giselle really could have put her hair in a ponytail threw some sandals on and went to a family reunion and she would have she wouldn't have looked out of place. None of the other girls could do that with their outfits. 
Every girl had on an outfit that gave you construction. It gave you, it took time to put this together. It gave you, I can't wear this outside of these doors. Giselle really could have put that dress on. Giselle really could have put a blue jean jacket on. No shade. Giselle could put a blue jean jacket on over that dress, some tennis shoes, and go to the mall. Tell me I'm lying. <laughs> I'm not lying to y'all. Giselle could put this blue jean jacket on over that dress, some tennis shoes, and go shopping. And nobody would ever even know. Yeah. I, am I telling a lie? <laughs> so I think that when the, when, when, when the girls are like, oh, you know, Giselle looked good. She didn't look bad. Giselle looked nice. Don't please don't get it twisted what I'm saying. Giselle looked nice, but it was very, she put, the, <laughs> you know what? <laughs> I knew something was up. I remember, let, let me tell you, this is how I knew Giselle was going to be basic. Because, you know, Andy always posts clips during the reunions. Giselle was the first one out. And, and Andy had his phone up and he was talking. And he said, oh, Giselle's here. She's the first one out. Did y'all see that video? I said, now it makes sense. All she had to do was slide on her dress. That's all she had to do. All she had to do was slide on the dress. Pull it up. <laughs> Pull it up and put it on. Giselle was the most basic out of all those girls. She literally stepped into that dress, put it over her shoulders, and walked out. <laughs> Giselle could wear that dress to the barbecue, she could wear it to the family reunion. If she put on a blue jean jacket, she could go to a PTA meeting. If she put on a blue, a blue jean jacket, she could go run errands. Giselle could put that on with some golden goose tennis shoes. <laughs> Giselle could have put that dress on with some golden goose tennis shoes. Grabbed her a crossbody. <laughs> Giselle could have put that that put that dress on with a blue jean jacket, a crossbody, some Converse, and went and ran errands that whole day. Tell me I'm lying. Tell me I'm lying. <laughs> Tell me I'm lying. I'm not lying. <laughs> That's why Giselle looked a mess. Not because she actually just looked a mess. She looked a mess because, girl, you can't even do what the theme is. The theme is art gallery. <laughs> and, girl, you really just walked out. Girl, you really just walked out of here with one of the most basic black dresses you could find, Versace and all. <laughs> you found the most basic black simple dress you could find, and the theme of the night was art gallery. Quiet as it's kept, the dress she had on last year probably would have fit better for this year <laughs> if it was black. <laughs> because I can guarantee you, I can guarantee you, y'all don't want to admit it, but I can guarantee you, if Wendy... Our Candace came out in that basic ass dress. Y'all would have ripped them up. <laughs> y'all know y'all would have. If they would have came out with a motherfucking spaghetti strap dress on. <laughs> if they would have came out with a spaghetti strap dress on, y'all would have tore Wendy and Candace up. <laughs> I knew that was a Versace dress when she when I first saw it because Victoria Monet had that same dress like in a baby blue color, I think during the Grammys. 
one of one of her, I think it was during the Grammys, she uh had on that same dress Giselle had on, like in baby blue. So as soon as I saw Giselle in the dress, I knew it was it was Versace. When uh Toy was on thank you, Miss Simple. When Toy was on Carlos King, she admitted to ha to her having marriage issues and hanging on and hanging with an ex. Oh. So Quad may have been onto something about Toya cheating. Oh. Oh, I didn't know that. You don't like Wendy's dress? I love Wendy's dress. Yes, Miss Thing had on scary straps, baby. Girl, that's the girl. Bitch, I'm wearing Giselle. I'm wearing Giselle out in that spaghetti. Bitch, I done, bitch, I done called her spaghetti shop dress. I done said she could have worn to a PTA meeting. I done said she could have worn. Girl, I done said she could go run errands with it. Girl, I done said she could throw a blue jean jacket on. <laughs> I done said she could go to a barbecue. I done said she could go to the family reunion. I said she could wear some toy, some toy bird sandals. Yes, yes, yes. And everything I said was true. Yeah, everything I said was the truth. <laughs> <laughs> Everything I said was the truth. <laughs> Girl, Giselle don't have to put nothing and y'all be and some of y'all be gassing her up. One of my friends, hey friend, if you watching, you be gassing Giselle up. <laughs> Giselle, all Giselle gotta do is just come out there with the basic of the basic of the basic on. <laughs> all the other girls, it takes them three hours to get ready. Girl, Giselle gave you a butt. Girl, Giselle gave you a part down the side. Girl, Giselle, all Giselle did was get a comb, part this, bring it to the side, slide her dress on, throw some strappy heels on, and go out and go out on the stage. That's exactly what Giselle did. All the other girls, it took three people. It took three people to put Wendy dress on. It took three people to put Karen dress on. <laughs> okay. It took two people to put Nelka dress on. Make sure her titty didn't pop out. It took two people to put Asher dress on. Giselle said her dress on by herself. <laughs> and then Giselle said, girl, where my shoes at? Giselle put her shoes on and she walked out on the, on the stage. And that's why she was the first person on the stage. Because everybody else is in the back, girl. Because <laughs> it took three people to put their dresses on. Okay. <laughs> Just a stroke. <laughs> girl, girl, I tell you, girl, I'm gonna be on Giselle ass every chance I get. <laughs> yeah. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> girl. Y'all know Giselle said that strap up just like this. That's all she did. Good. Oh, hell. She make me sick. <laughs> Not okay, dress. Come on, shout out to dress porn. <laughs> okay. Yes. Put it on herself and went in the hallway to get it to get to get help to zip it up. That's about the only thing. Thank you so much. Okay. Huh. Make me sick. I always got something to say. Girl. Anyways, I'm so serious. Let me text my friend. Hey, friend, you want to go get something to eat? I'm hungry. A crowd ball dress. That's it. Girl. 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 And y'all was hyping and y'all was hyping Giselle up. Girl. Girl, my friend, well, one of my friends wanted, well, she not going no more. Girl. <laughs> 
I must just go ahead and say it so y'all so y'all can cuss her out. Brittany, y'all know Brittany. Girl, we were supposed to be going to get some sushi. But girl, she she it's always something. You watching? It's always something. Deb's fast is okay. Dots. Girl, rainbow. Rule 21. Kato's. The Ever 21. I'll go. Agachi. Charlie Roos. Girl, Nine West. Okay? All the stores of the stores. Okay? Foley's. Girl, she got that dress from Foley's. And Foley's don't even exist no more. Girl, you know. Girl, they shut Foley's back. They shut Foley's down in 2002. Girl, she went to Foley's and got that dress. Hmm. Foley's. Yes. <laughs> Foley's. Charlotte Roos. Agachi. Pennies. You know, back in the day, you know where I'm from, we don't call JC Pennies. Uh, we don't call JC Pennies. Uh, JC Pennies. We call JC Pennies Pennies. <laughs> you going to Pennies? <laughs> Country and just get them. Yes. Learn us, my girl. Yes, yes, the girls are eating. Yes, JC Penny. Yes, <laughs> BB, Tory. Okay, five seven nine. Yes, City Trends. Girl, outfit outlet. Girl, take me shopping, make me happy. <laughs> the outfit outlet is here in Houston. The girls know about outfit outlet. Hello, that's why all the girls used to go back in the day to go get their club clothes. How I know because my me and my sister used to be in there all the time looking for her looking for her dress for twenty dollars. Hello, girl. That was back in the that was back in the early two thousand. That's when my sister first moved to Houston. Girl, we used to be at, we used to be at Alpha 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 Island every week. Girl, looking for her club dress. Girl, all we got is fifteen dollars. Get your cute little spaghetti strap dress. <laughs> Make sure it's here a little tight. Girl, above the knee and throw some heels on. <laughs> Oh, yes, God. Okay. 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 Pally Ross, okay. <laughs> Express. That dress didn't look like it come from Express. <laughs> Girl. <laughs> Girl. Yes. And I'm gonna say the same thing, girl. So if you if you don't like me, or you don't wanna as soon as you as soon as episode one of reunion come on, I'm gonna go in on Giselle Gis, Giselle dress again. <laughs> okay. I'm gonna go in again. I am. I am. Okay. Oh, hell. Shit. <laughs> huh. <laughs> but she looked cute. I ain't gonna lie. She was cute. But, girl, you're gonna have to, like, that's what I'm saying. Giselle really believes in no shade. Some of the girls believe that Giselle doesn't have to do a lot because they think she is this beauty queen walking. That's why she is okay with resting in mediocrity. That's why she's okay with just throwing on a spaghetti drap, a spaghetti strap dress when everybody else, girl, girl, had custom made dresses on. Girl, that's why she's okay. Thank you, Nick Moore. Jizzy said, "My my my eyes green, so I don't need to dress." Exactly. That's why she's okay with her home looking the way that it looks. No shade. She own a home. I don't, so I can't be mad at it. But that's why she's okay with the decor of her home. What did Karen say? Looking like Ronald McDonald. Ain't that what Karen said? Jeezy House looked like on the inside? That's why she's okay. Because Giselle thinks that I'm pretty enough that I don't have to do a lot. Girl. Cousin, did you decide to do the meet and greet? Woo, child, the ghetto girl. We're going to do a meet and greet one day. <laughs> oh, here you go. Come on. <laughs> yes, I was waiting for you to come on, baby. Everybody give a shout out to the boy. Hey, the boy. 
Hey, Rodney, why do you hate Giselle? Here he go. Here he go. Here he go, good boy. Child, here we go, good boy. I'm not about to get into it with you tonight. I'm not about to argue with you tonight. Not tonight, good boy. Not tonight. Not tonight. I'm gonna tell you why I don't. I'm gonna tell you why I don't care for Giselle. <laughs> okay. Since you want to know, I used to like Giselle. <laughs> I used to like Giselle. Here he go. 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 Hold up. Isn't the grand drunk? Isn't the grand drunk reading? She can't talk. Thank you, good boy. I don't like Giselle because I used to like Giselle. I thought Giselle had the makings of a great housewife. Her first season, I thought she was a pretty woman. I I like, I thought she was funny. Um, you know, I loved her tagline. The word on the street is I am the word on the street. Girl, when I tell you, I think that Giselle has the best tagline ever. I like when she said, it doesn't matter where I'm sitting. What she said, it doesn't matter where I'm sitting. Uh, wherever I sit is the baddest, the baddest spot in the building. I know that's right, bitch. I don't know if it's the show that turned Giselle into a mean girl. Some of the girls say she was like that when she was a first lady. I don't know. But Giselle, to me, reminds me of a black Karen. She really, really does. I think that Giselle thinks that the Real Housewives of Potomac is here you go. What's up, Jamie? Hey, Jamie. Jamie, that's me. Good boy is ready to get into some things. Okay. I think Giselle thinks that that the Potomac is the AKA home. I do. I think she thinks that that it's the AKA sorority house. Giselle thinks that she's untouchable. And that's partly because the producers in Bravo have also put that in her head. Giselle and some of the fans think that Giselle can do what she wants to do. <laughs> Here you go. Gabor must not have gotten enough last night. Thank you, make it make sense. Giselle thinks that she can do what she feels is best for the show without any consequence. And some of the fans think that if the girls respond to Giselle, they're doing too much. Giselle can go after Chris. She can go after Eddie. But then when she get cursed out, then all of a sudden, Candace and Wendy are wrong. Giselle is the one who can go to Thailand and go get a producer and then want to have the girls' room searched over a hundred and fifty bottle of tequila, dollar bottle of tequila. Giselle is the one who will say that a man he made me go into his hotel room. I mean, made me go into his bedroom. Giselle just comes across as a mean person. She really does. She really, really does. And I think part of it may be again because. The producers and Bravo have put her on this pedestal and she thinks that she's untouchable. I also think that Giselle comes from a world like a lot of us do. <laughs> Let me shut up. I was, about to, I, was, I was about to go down a whole nother road. I'm not even gonna go down that road. That's, that I ain't gonna go down that road tonight. I think Giselle is a mean person. I do.
<sighs> Ashley ain't ditzy. Ashley is not ditzy. Ashley ain't ditzy. Ashley knows exactly what she be doing. I think the producers did too. I think, I, and, I, and, I, and I will say this too. I also think, even though it's not necessarily Giselle's fault, I also think when I see people online give Giselle a pass, it makes me roll my eyes at Giselle even more. When Giselle can get away with stuff that the other girls can't do, even though it's the fans who are giving Giselle a pass, it makes me roll my eyes at Giselle. Because I also think too now, Giselle knows how this show's work. This show works, and she knows that because Giselle be online, Giselle be on Twitter, she be on the YouTube. So I think that like when people say that Candace, she gets fueled by the comments, which I do think Candace does. I do. I think Giselle does too. I do. I just think Giselle is mean. I really do. Kenya, Kenya and Giselle are two different people. Kenya has di Kenya has responded. And some people will consider fucked up ways, but Giselle, King, Giselle ain't got shit up, baby. King, you, <laughs> the person who y'all want King to be is actually Giselle. King ain't out here accusing, just accusing men of of SA just because. <laughs> Hello. Okay. Thank you, good boy. Giselle should have been fired when she made the accusations against Chris. I like her, but but she only did it for a storyline. But I do love a mean girl. Thank you, Gabor. I like a mean girl too, but I like for my mean girls. I think I like for my mean girls. I think I like for it to only appear to be a mean girl on TV. Like Kenya ain't no mean girl in real life. Kenya really ain't no mean girl on TV. I keep telling y'all the real, the real mean girl, the real villain was actually Portia. Y'all don't want to believe me, but Portia was actually the mean girl. Portia was actually the villain. It never was. It never was. It never was Kenya. People are more upset at Kenya for flirting with Apollo than they are at Portia for fucking somebody's husband. People still won't let Kenya die down that she flirted with, with Apollo. But people love the fact that, that Portia found her fairy tale with somebody else's husband. And another thing, too, that Kenya does not do, when Kenya be in her shit, she stand in her shit. Kenya don't play mean girl. 
and then act like a victim. Giselle will play mean girl and then act like the victim. Kenya gonna respond, then she gonna get to the reunion, she gonna cuss your ass out, and she gonna stand in her shit. Giselle gonna start some shit, get to the reunion, and act like she don't know what's going on. Kenya ain't never did no shit like that. Kenya always stands in her shit. Always. <laughs> yeah. Kenya follows through with the assignment. Dr. Heavenly follows through with the assignment. Dr. Heavenly is going to start some shit. She's going to finish some shit. And she's going to get to the reunion and cut your ass out some more. Kenya, a lot of the times, responded to these people. Sometimes she might start some shit, but Kenya will respond to the people, even in those instances where she probably did start some shit. She's still going to stand in her shit. She's going to get to the reunion. She's going to cut your ass out, and girl, she's going to sit there with her legs crossed. Hello? <laughs> Is this what cancer, no cancer looks like? He made me go into a room. Free Uncle Ben. She's me. Thank you, Elle Fisher. That's what I'm saying. Like, even with the whole no tea, no shade, <laughs> even with the whole... I don't, even, I don't even feel like going down that road. <laughs> I'm going to leave it alone. Giselle gets a pass, and it's frustrating because... Again, the other girls, even Ashley. And I, y'all know I used to go for Ashley. But I also have to be honest and say that Ashley was held on wheels seasons before Ashley had. All it took was for Ashley was to have some white babies and everybody forgot the shit that Ashley used to say. Ashley has come after the husband's. She has come after folks' mental health. She has disrespected folks in their homes and everybody forget. I love when Giselle pointed at Wendy still looking at Andy at the same <laughs> oh, at the season seven reunion and said, I don't like her and Wendy started crying. I don't remember that, Gabor. Thank you. I don't remember. I don't remember Wendy crying. It's also colorism when people call Giselle a mean girl and Kenya a villain. There we go. Come on, Barney. <laughs> call it. Y'all call Giselle mean girls, but Kenya is a villain. Y'all ain't never called Kenya no mean girl. Ashley talked about Ray's penis. She talked about Katie's mental health. No, you can say something to me about, oh, I miss Mim Super Chat. Hold up. What Mim said? Hold up. What Mim say? Oh, here we go. Oh, okay. I think Portia should still need these African prints. There you go, being messy. I mean, technically, they both were involved with men who were married, right? And I guess the men, I guess the men were involved with them while they were married. So, I don't remember Wendy crying either. I think a boy, you just made that up. <laughs> yes, Ashley called Monica drunk and said that the reason why what, that we go, Ashley called Monica drunk and that caused her miscarriage. Yes. Ashley, the, the it's no shade. Candace do say some shit that made me roll my eyes sometimes, but I just find it astonishing that can't that that Ashley has said the shit that she has said. And girl, y'all just look by y'all just look past it. Ashley said that Monique was the reason why she had a miscarriage due to her drinking. Ashley said Ashley talked about Katie's mental health. Ashley talked about Ray's penis. Ashley was hell on wheels. Now, don't get it twisted. At one point, I think Giselle started with Ashley season one. You know, Giselle going to start with the girls. Ashley 
baby, she will comfort the girls. That's why. That's why I'm like, girl, did y'all eat, were y'all even here <laughs> before season five started? Do I need to send the receipts, baby girls? <laughs> Thank you, Gabong. <laughs> you might have to, baby, because I don't remember that. I think you're making that up. I think you just made that up, Gabor. Wendy ain't never cried over no Giselle. Hello? <laughs> yes! Remember, remember the episode when Ashley was talking to Katie and she was like, she has $25 in her account, babe. <laughs> Ashley! Ashley has come for everybody on the show. And y'all swerving now, that's Candace. Ashley sat right there on that swing set and a cute and said and said and said that that and said that Robin had twenty five dollars to hug him. <laughs> yeah. Mm. <laughs> Ashley got on camera and said Robin was worth eleven dollars. Thank you, good boy. Mm. I just it's so um, I just think it's unfair. I really do. I just really think it's unfair. I, I just think it's unfair the way that the girls treat Candace and Wendy in comparison to the other girls. I just think it's unfair. Just like I said, like y'all talked about Candace talking about Giselle's dwindling uterus and Giselle is 60 years old. But just like somebody said, y'all love Phaedra for talking about Kenya and her infertility journey, and Kenya didn't even have no kids. At least Giselle got three kids underneath her belt, and Giselle's 60. At this point, she don't need her fucking uterus, okay? Girl. But y'all swerving now what Phaedra said was the best read in the world. And we knew that Kenya probably was probably having issues, you know, with possibly having a baby. And she ain't have no babies underneath her belt. At least Giselle had three. That's what I be talking about. The girl y'all be making y'all. It's like y'all. It's not y'all, but people. They they. It's like y'all just let people get away with certain stuff. Once Wendy started acting like a bitch to Giselle, even though Giselle has been acting like a bitch to Wendy, people hate it. Now Wendy is able to walk into a building and not care about Giselle. And have a good time. People don't like it. It wasn't no problem when Giselle was walking around here not speaking to nobody. And Wendy was trying to give her a hug and talk to her. It wasn't an issue then. But now Wendy is basically matching her energy. And now it's a problem. Now it's Wendy and Candace who are holding the group back from moving along. No. Wendy and Candace tried to move the group along. What's her face said no. And so they said okay well fuck you too. <laughs> Now Wendy is on some, you don't give a fuck about my mama, I don't give a fuck about your daddy. Now it's, oh, she's being too mean. But when Giselle was calling that lady mama evil, when nobody saying nothing. When she was throwing it out there that Jamal, you know, even Jamal said that's nothing that you play around with. <laughs> but did nobody say nothing. It is what it is. The line is always moving. It is. Wendy giving Giselle exactly what Giselle been giving her, and the girls don't like it. Yep, and another thing, Kenya can't stand Marla, but she still come to work and interacted with her. <laughs> Andy is tired of the mess. I'm sure they saw. I, I hope so. I hope so. They're gonna have to do something this season. They not they not getting rid of Giselle. They're gonna have to get <sighs> Ashley. It's probably gone. Robin, girl, you probably out of there. 
And Nelka, girl, you ain't even got to come back. Hold up. Jizzy ain't there. The ladies have fun. Exactly. I've already said that. Yes. When Jizzy not around, the ladies have fun. Oh, here we go. Here we go, Gabor. Here we go. Okay. I don't like Wendy because she let them walk over her. When she now she ain't willing. Okay. When Jizz showed up to Eddie's event and ignored Wendy, security should have been escorting her out. So now you met. So now you met. <laughs> yeah, that's what I said. So now you met. Okay. 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 So you dislike so you dislike Wendy for not having her escorted out, but you don't dislike Giselle for being disrespectful and walking into their uh, walking into their event and not speaking. I'm mad at you. I'm not mad at you because you were rude. I'm mad at you because you didn't do nothing about her being rude. That's what you just said. That's what you just said, Gabor. You mad at Wendy because Wendy didn't do nothing about Giselle being rude, but you're not mad at Giselle for being rude. Good boy, you're not about to good boy. You are not about to work my you are not about to work my nerves tonight. Cause I know you're trying to piss me off. <laughs> good boy is trying to piss me off on purpose. I know it. Good boy, good boy is trying to piss me off on purpose. <laughs> Correct. If you're getting laid to if you're getting paid to be here, you will speak. Mm. Paralegally exhausted. When Eva came to RHOA with a good hair mess, they shut it down immediately. Okay? Kenya got her right on together and said, girl, you know what the fuck it is. Stop acting slow. <laughs> okay? I don't like... Thank you, make it make sense. I don't like that Wendy showed Mia her coochie. We don't know what Mia's eyes, hands, or mouth have been. Okay? We know they ain't been on Gordon. Hello? Baby, you know I'm going you know to gloss these lips up, baby. Hello? Okay. <laughs> oh, oh, God. You're so messy. I'm not even gonna read your comment out loud, but I see it though, girl. Hello. <sighs> mm Giselle is Lisa Renner. Giselle is Lisa Renner. But at least Lisa Renner stood in her shit. That's one thing I did always talk about Lisa Renner. Even though I came to Beverly Hills late in the game, I, I from what I saw from Lisa Renner, the few seasons I watched while she was on, I liked that Lisa Renner stood in her shit. Hello? That bitch was messy as hell.
She didn't. I don't remember her playing victim either. I'm just saying when I watch, because I don't, you know, I just I didn't start watching until like season 10. Jizzy need the Jizzy need the money. Jizzy need the show. Mm mm. Here he go. Mm mm. Mm mm. You're misunderstanding what I'm saying. This is a good boy. <laughs> You're mis. And I miss. Okay, let me fin Let me read. Okay. You're misunderstanding what I'm saying. I'm saying Wendy and Candace is always doing what's best for the group. Giselle don't care, so why should they? Because they're not in that position to be like Giselle. Giselle, let's call a thing a thing. Giselle has been there since season one. They have made Giselle the face of the franchise. They have convinced Giselle that she has all the power. Candy, Candace and Wendy can only do so much. They don't have they don't they don't have they don't have the space to really do as Giselle. Candace will come out every season and say that she thinks she's gonna get fired. Have y'all heard Candace say that? Candace has come out and said that she every season she doesn't think she's she's she doesn't think she's getting invited back. I can guarantee you Giselle that'll never cross Giselle's mind. I can guarantee you Giselle don't never think that she's getting fired. Candace will tell you every season, I think I'm, I think I'm getting fired. <laughs> I think they're not going to bring me back. <laughs> Even though I don't think Candace and, Wend Candace and Wendy are not innocent, but I think that's the thing. It's not about them being innocent. It's about people acting as if they are the only guilty ones. I think that's the problem. They can't. What's one thing that Wendy done done to somebody? <laughs> what has Wendy done? Hello? <laughs> there we go. Giselle, name one. Thank you, Bonnie. Bonnie, name one iconic Giselle one liner or we read quickly. They ain't got it. They ain't got it. Thank you, Danny Webb, 1971. Love you, Rodney. Love you back. The boy. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Baby, they now, now they done left. They ain't got nothing to say. Cause I'm still trying to, I'm still trying, I'm still I'm still waiting on y'all to tell me what Wendy did to the people. Cause quiet is just kept. If we if we're gonna go ahead and just nipping in the bud, you know, let me stop playing games with y'all. I'm gonna go ahead and tell y'all exactly what the fuck it is. 
<laughs> not, I'm not talking about sugar boy. I'm not talking about you, brother. I'm not talking about you. But I'm gonna go ahead and just say what the problem, what the people, the people had a problem with Wendy. Y'all ain't like Wendy because Wendy was a dark skinned black woman who came into the show who she was the most educated and she let the girls know she had four degrees. Ever since then, y'all ain't never seen it for Wendy. Mill came in her first season screaming she was a boss, she's a boss, she's a boss, she's a boss. And y'all ain't said nothing about Mill saying she was a boss. Come to find out, she ain't no fucking boss. Candace came in letting the girls know I didn't grow up in the hood, I grew up in the country club. Y'all ain't seen it for Candace ever since. Hello? When Wendy came in talking about her four degrees, that was because Wendy was new to the group. Quiet as it's kept, as much as some people get online trying to act like Wendy talk about her four degrees all the time, she really don't talk about those four degrees like that. Her first season, yes, the four degrees were mentioned. But for the most part, y'all really can't sit here and say that Wendy just come in season after season after season talking about her four degrees because she does not. The four, the four degree conversation was a part of her introduction to the show. And on some real shit, if you got four degrees, that ain't nothing to be quiet about. <laughs> Who the fuck got four degrees and ain't gonna tell nobody? <laughs> That's why some of the girls don't really see it for Wendy. Because the truth of the matter is, this dark-skinned black bitch came into the motherfucking group, the most educated, got the best fucking resume. That's why when Karen, and we're going to call her thing a thing, when Karen was walking around here talking about she's not impressed, I said, oh, Karen, you one of those girls. Because how in the fuck you not impressed by a woman who has a husband, three kids, a political commentator, a professor at Johns Hopkins, four fucking degrees. What the fuck you mean you're not impressed? Well, who the fuck you impressed by? Because if you're not impressed by that, then I'm gonna have to, you're gonna have to give me a motherfucking example. Who you impressed by? Because ain't nobody in a right fucking mind gonna sit here and tell me that as much as y'all like to put marriage on a pedestal and having a family on a pedestal you finally got this woman on this tv show who's married who has kids who has a decent home who is a professor who's a political commentator who has four degrees who's a doctor and y'all say y'all not impressed. Well, who the fuck you impressed by? Who else? Because the truth of the matter is, it ain't too many motherfuckers on the housewives period across the board that can really compete with Dr. Wendy's resume. And that's just what the fuck it is. It ain't none of them on Potomac competing with Dr. Wendy's resume. Hello? Hello? That's what the fuck it is. And then on top of that, we know that Potomac was supposed to be a show that was really only supposed to be about light-skinned black women. We're going to call a thing a thing. That's what the show was supposed to be about. Light-skinned black women. And here come Candace coming from generational wealth. The girls swarping now, they like generational wealth, but they dog got Candace every chance they get. Now here come Dr. Here come Dr. Wendy. And the truth of the matter is, can't none of those girls on that show, none of them, none of them, none of them, none of them can compete with Candace or Dr. Wendy. Bitch, Candace was at the goddamn White House taking pictures with, taking pictures with Barack Obama. Hello? <laughs> they are the two most educated women on the goddamn cast. 
They have the most education to back to behind behind their names. Bachelor's degrees, master's degrees, and PhDs. Six degrees between both of them. Candace was just at the White House the other day. Just the other day. Every time I look up, Dr. Wendy at the White House. Hello? That's why the girls really don't like Candace and Wendy. We're going to call a thing a thing. That's why they don't like Candace and Wendy. They, they ain't going to never admit it. The fans ain't going to never admit it. But that's exactly what it is. Y'all were up, they were upset when Wendy did tell Ashley, you will refer to me as Dr. Wendy. <laughs> and that was because they were in the middle of combat. You know what I'm saying? But again, for the most part, y'all really can't sit here and say that Wendy talk about her four degrees. Wendy don't really bring up her four degrees. Wendy probably brought up her four degrees four to, probably four times her first season. Mia came in her first season and called herself a boss every time we looked at the TV screen. And I know for a fact there was not as much out. There was no outrage online about Mia calling herself a boss. So why is it that y'all get upset at Dr. Wendy when she talks about her four degrees, but the girls don't say nothing about Mia when all she said, I'm a boss, I'm a boss, I'm a boss, I'm a boss, I'm a boss. I make $400,000. I'm a boss, I'm a boss, I'm a boss. Mia said she was a boss, I know, at least 67 times. <laughs> but y'all mad because Wendy is talking about her four degrees? Hello? Mia told us her salary. It's one thing. I'm just. It's one thing for you just not to like somebody's personality. Then that's fine. Everybody don't get 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 with everybody's personality. If you said you didn't like Wendy because there's just something about her personality, I was like, okay. But I think I always question, girl. I just I always question why why is it so much vitriol for Candace and Wendy online compared to the other one? And then when I hear people say, "Oh, Candace got a smart mouth," okay, Candace got a smart mouth, okay. Not, 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 not a show that has turned, not, not a show that has turned into reeds and shade. And y'all say that Candace has a smart mouth, and she, but, she, but Candace, it's not that, it's not that her mouth is so smart, is that she goes below the belt. But you got, again, Phaedra talking about Kenya and possi possible fertility issues. That's not below the belt. You got Portia talking about Candy and Ty was going to take me to a sex dungeon. That's not below the belt. You got Karen talking about um, you a hoe from Hampton University and you got a hot box and girl sing sing. But y'all say that was just playful banter between two friends. Y'all got Ashley who will talk about Katie Rose and her mental health. That's not too far. You got Ashley who will talk about Ray's penis. That's not too far. Sure. You got Karen who will refer to Giselle as stovepipe legs. That's not body shaming. Candace calls Wendy wild body. That's body shaming. Sure. Huh? Huh? What? You have Ashley who says that Wendy was being ferocious. She was ferocious. 
That's what she said about Dr. Wendy. Even though Ashley was at the end of the table on this side and Dr. Wendy was at the end of the table on the opposite side, she said that Dr. Wendy in that moment was ferocious. Now, mind you, you've had Robin come to your motherfucking job and put her finger in your face. At your job, she put her finger in your face at your job. And I don't never remember Ashley referring to Robin Dixon as aggressive or ferocious. And then y'all want to get down to the goddamn Instagram talking about y'all don't think colorism exists. Girl, boo. <laughs> you have Robin who actually got in Monique's face. If anybody is the most aggressive one in the cast, it's Robin fucking Dixon. Now, mind you, Ashley and Dr. Wendy were just in a war of words, an exchange of words across the table. Robin came to your job and put her finger in your, place, in your face in the middle of the motherfucking restaurant. <laughs> Don't play with me. Don't play with me. Do not play with me. Robin walked up on Wendy and then lied and said that she didn't and then lied and said that Sharice didn't have to hold her back. No, Sharice had to hold her back. While we got it on footage. Why is on the footages? So you have Robin going down to Ashley's job. You have her getting in Monique's face and then Sharice had to stand up and stop her mid-walk. Sharice definitely helped her lie. Sharice definitely helped uh, what's her face lie. That's why it's hard. That's why it's kind of like it's hard to. I don't even like to even talk about the whole colorism stuff anymore, because at this point, it is what it is. I think people are going to choose to remember what they choose to remember. They're going to choose to believe that it doesn't exist. And that's just what it is. I know it exists. We have examples that that it exists. But instead of wanting to call the girls colorist and Candace, she's a part of it too. Instead of wanting to just outright call the girls call the girls colorist, they say they're just mean girls, or they say that colorism exists but just not in this group. Because now Candace is in a position where Quadis is kept. I see why she feels that she probably shouldn't have said nothing. Because now you've been put in a position where now you have to say that your coworkers are colorists. And if you say that they're a colorist, then girl, your $800,000 job might be on the line. So now I have to say, oh, no, I don't think that there's colorism in the group, but I think that it exists. It's just the best. Yeah. When you know it exists. Let me say something. Yeah. Giselle knows. I'm sure part of the reason why Jamal Bryant, the dark-skinned black man, picked Giselle was because Giselle fit the aesthetic of what he thought beauty was. 
I'm sure that when Ray picked Karen off of that porn, and Karen being a woman of a certain age, and Ray definitely being a man of a certain age, that Karen fit the aesthetic. Just like Matthew Knowles told y'all too. When he got with Tina, he thought Tina was a white woman. They know what's going on. Giselle, Giselle's daddy, may he rest in peace, he was one of the ones I heard calling Barbara, Barbara, Johnson, uh, Barbara Jordan ain't, uh, ain't, uh, ain't your mama. Hello? So please don't think that colorism don't exist. Giselle don't know a fuck thing about it because she do. Let me shut up. Yes. And then Robin threatening Katie. Yes. I saw someone today on Twitter. It was a thread. And well, it was a conversation. And people were saying it was a white guy. And he said that Candace, based off of the trailer, is the reason that the group is not moving forward. That's what he said. He said that Candace was the reason the group was not moving forward. I almost said something about, so I'm not about to argue with no white man about colorism. Bitch, you don't, you, you probably one of the white men who don't even want to acknowledge that racism exists. So I know you damn sure don't know nothing about no colorism. Hello? <laughs> You saw that? I just said, girl, I really had my thing. I was like, I'm not even gonna argue with I'm not even gonna argue with this white man because girl, <laughs> I already know your kind. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> is that all? <laughs> girl, I had to put my I had to put my foot <laughs> on some of the girls next tonight, just a little bit. Not Gabor's. Gabor, Gabor's my good, good, good Gabor's my good friend, y'all. I love Gabor. Gabor ain't got nothing to do with what I said. Love memes. Yes. Girl, I love everybody. I'm like Carlos King. What Carlos King be saying? I love all the girls. <laughs> I love all the girls. Can we discuss how reverse colorism isn't a thing? Hey, buddy, reverse colorism is not a thing, y'all. Sorry to let y'all know. I think what it comes down to is, I, I, I'm going to go ahead and just say something that's going to that's gonna shake the table a little bit. I think that, this is what I think. I think that for Black people who happen to just be light-skinned, I think that once we start to talk about colorism, I think they think that takes away from them being Black. I really do think that. I think they think that if we acknowledge that colorism happens, if we acknowledge that, yes, I benefit from my skin being close to white, I think they think that that's us trying to deny them being black. You're still black, <laughs> okay? You still a nigga. But the truth of the matter is, your skin being closer to white, you do get a benefit. Let's just go backwards for a couple of years. Me, Candace, Wendy, and all the other dark-skinned people, we would be filled niggas. You, your mama, and your cousin too, who might be light-skinned, y'all would be house niggas. So even though we were all black, there was a benefit for you being light-skinned 
versus me being dark skinned. Now, we are all probably going through some of the same shit. Okay? But you being of lighter complexion, you benefit from it more. You just do. And there's no denying that. You're not held back because your skin is light. You benefit from your skin being light. Even when it just comes down to like looks. How many times, just be honest, how many times have you heard someone say you're cute for a light skinned person? Nobody says that. What they do say is, oh, you're cute for a dark skinned person. You're cute for a dark skinned girl. You ain't never heard nobody say, you're cute for a light-skinned girl. Because even with your skin being dark, it never even came with you being attractive. So I think that when black people of lighter complexion make it seem as though they don't benefit and that they're held back. You're not held back because your skin is lighter. Now, in some situations, you still will be treated like a nigga. OK. But systematically, you're not held back because your skin is of lighter complexion. It's just, it's, you just you're just not. You're just not. You're just not. You're just not. And so then when we start to go into the real, the real Housewives of Atomic, there's a reason why people are willing to give Giselle, Karen, Ashley, Robin, hello, Mia, the benefit of the doubt. If y'all don't see it, I don't know what else to say. But then when it comes to Dr. Wendy, Candace, y'all have their head on a motherfucking girl. Black people don't think that colorism exists. We will have conversations all day long about racism, uh, how black people are treated when it comes to white people. But baby, let a conversation about colorism come up, girl. Black people will swerve now. It does not exist. Black people will start to act like we're blaming colorism on them. And when I say black, I'm talking about lighter skinned black people will act like we're blaming colorism on them. Girl, you didn't invent colorism. Girl, it's not your fault. You benefit from it, but it's not your fault. Girl, you didn't start it. It's just like with white people. When we start talking about racism, I didn't do anything, bitch. We're not saying you did it, but your great, 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 great grandpapa and your great, 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 great grandmama did, bitch, and you benefit from it too. Well, I'm not saying you did shit. I know you ain't did shit to me in 2020, 2024, but you benefit from it. And I think that what happens is 
When people refuse to acknowledge that colorism exists, you start to become a part of the problem. Because when you when you refuse to exist, that you being of a certain complexion, even though you are black, you benefit from it. It doesn't help anybody. It's not about saying who's at fault because you're not at fault. But bitch, you benefit from it. It just is what it is. It is what it is. Girl, you know the people start playing. Acknowledge it. <laughs> Acknowledge it. Acknowledge that when we watch certain things that it exists, we can use Potomac as an example because we've been used, we've been talking about that. Acknowledge and stop acting like you don't see that there's a difference in the way that Wendy and Candace are treated compared to the other ladies. And then when you start to break it down, what's the difference of the two, of the two groups, class? What's the difference between the two groups? What's the difference between the ladies who usually get a pass on the show versus the ladies who don't get a pass on the show? What's the difference? Because they're all black. So let's go to the next thing. What's the next thing? <laughs> And so once you acknowledge that, what is that call, class? Hello? Yeah. And Robin argued with Andy on Watch What Happens Live that she did not have... Um, to be moved by Sharice and lied and said and looked at her crazy because it's on video. Exactly, Kim Cat. We all know she was lying. <sighs> Status as an oppressed person doesn't erase one's capacity to per 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 perpetuate white supremacy, but don't like to hear about it. Don't like to hear that. Thank you. I think I think some of y'all be thinking that like, girl, when we have conversations of colorism, girl, we expecting y'all to get down and cry and oh my god, I'm so sorry, girl. We ain't saying that, girl. Girl, I have light skinned friends. Hello, girl. Nobody asking y'all like we ain't, like we not saying like, girl. Oh my god, you're responsible for colorism and oh my god. But girl, when we have these conversations, don't act like it don't exist. Cause at that point I'm start I'm a, I, I start looking at I start looking at the people crazy. I think that's my that's pers that's my personal problem. When I start to see the conversations and I start to see people act like it don't exist, that's when I be like, uh, oh, girl, what? Oh, colorism not real. Oh, okay, okay. Any, it don't matter if you're Hispanic, black, it don't matter. Girl, if there's a spectrum from light to dark, it's more than likely colorism within that group of people. Period. Period. Colorism is real. The people don't, the people be trying to act like it don't exist. It affects everybody. And then it really affects black women. Like, girl, y'all don't know why. Like, even when we turn on TV, y'all don't, y'all, y'all don't want, y'all, y'all never wonder why, especially probably like, girl, years ago, why you would always only see light skinned girls in videos. Y'all don't, that never, that, that never, y'all don't think that was colorism? Y'all don't ever wonder why you would see, Girls and like it was light skinned girl that they never crossed y'all mind. 
Y'all don't think that's colorism? Y'all y'all thought that every leading lady that was light skinned it was because oh girl she it, it wasn't no y'all don't think that was colorism? Y'all really don't think that? Y'all don't think when y'all hear people say, oh, you're cute to be a dark-skinned girl, y'all don't think that's colorism? Why do you think they're saying that? Y'all don't think, y'all don't know what that was about? Y'all just thought it just so happened to be. Y'all don't remember a couple of years ago, wasn't that Tory Lanez who pulled that stunt, that fake stunt, and I think tried to make it seem as though like he was putting dark skinned girls in his videos or something? It was, it was somebody. I don't want to, it wasn't Tory, I think it was Tory Lanez. I think it was Tory Lanez. It was somebody. The paper bag test, girl, that's real. I remember Matthew Knowles coming out and basically saying that Beyonce being the color that she is plays a part in her success. And people got mad at Matthew because they felt as though Matthew was trying to take away from Beyonce's talent. That's how some people <laughs> choose to live in an alternate universe. Nobody's saying that Beyonce is not talented. We know the bitch is talented. There's no question about that. But we also know that Beyonce being her color also helps her with her career. That's just what it is. Y'all don't think Matthew, a 70 plus year old man, knows about colorism? If anybody knows, his ass definitely knows. He lived, baby, girl, hello? He's 70 something years old. How old is Matthew? Let's see. Matthew, oh. Matthew, oh. Hold up. Y'all got hungry. Ooh, how old is Matthew, y'all? Girl, y'all done got me started tonight. Y'all don't know why y'all got me over here. I told you I don't want to talk about this shit. <laughs> 72 years old. I told you I didn't want to talk about this shit. Girl, I'm trying to come over here. He can't laugh. Y'all feel like I'm in African-American literature, bitch. <laughs> Hello? <laughs> People are mad that Candace's generational wealth, upbringing, and, Wend and Wendy's educational resume in life should only be for... Uh, should only be for the people that look like Giselle, Robin, Mia, and Ashley. Thank you, Jay, Jay, uh, Jay Jersey girl. I believe so too. He's seventy two. Y'all don't think y'all don't fucking think that Matthew knows knows about colorism. Y'all think that he dumb? I done had to. But it is what it is, child. I still love everybody. But don't get it twisted. Let me let, let me let, let me let me make myself perfectly clear. <laughs> okay? Bitch, light skin, mutt, mix, girl. All you fine ass niggas out there. I don't give a damn if your mama is white and your daddy is black. I don't give a damn if your daddy is white and your mama is black. I don't give a damn. Fine is fine, okay? <laughs> so girl, shorty swing my way. You sure look good to me. Hey, cause when you please swing my way. Shorty swing my way. Hey, shorty swing my way. Okay. You sure look good to me. <laughs> Will you please swing my way? Shorty swing my way. Baby, I don't discriminate, okay? Okay, bitch. Okay. Okay. So please don't get it twisted, baby. Y'all don't give a damn, girl. If you, girl, 
Girl, the color of Beyonce, the color of Robin or Giselle. Bitch, if you're fine, you're fine. Okay, Giselle. <laughs> yes, okay. Please don't get it twisted, baby. Okay. No, no, that's right. Fuck around and find out. <laughs> Yes, bitch. Let me tell y'all something. I saw it's y'all know that model. I let me find, let me try to find a picture. Let me try to find. I I oh I think I know. Hold up. I don't know. I can't. Oh my god! Remember that model with the blue eyes? He was like light skinned He had dreads. I can't remember his name. I thought it was like Alex something. Remember the guy, the fashion? No, 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 not no Jeremy Meeks. No, it was the other guy from years ago. He had locks. He had lot. No, not prison bay. No, he had locks. No, not Jeremy Meeks. No, I know who y'all talking about. Not him. No, he had locks. I don't remember his name. He was real popular back in the day. I cannot think of his name. Anyways, it was a Nick. No, not not. Oh, not Gary. Gary with his fine ass. No, not Gary. No. Mm mm. Gary fine as fuck. Gary get Gary still fine to this day. Mm -mm. Not him. Not Lenny. No. Not Flashman Wade. No, not him. No. No, not Flashman. No. Not Gary Andrew. No. He <laughs> was a light skinned dude. He had locks. I cannot remember. I can't remember his name. He had like bluish, greenish eyes. I thought his name was like Alex. Hold on. I'm about to find his ass. Hold up. Mail. Oh, <gasps> here he go. Girl, this thing right here. Girl, this thing. Him. Girl, him. <laughs> Bitch, it's this nigga that used to work at the barbecue place up the street. When I tell you it was a nigga that looked just... The, when I tell you, baby, his name is Alexander Masoon. I knew it was something. Girl, I don't know where he at anymore. I don't know. Girl, I hope he's still alive and doing okay. Bitch, it's a nigga that work at the barbecue place. Rudy's. Y'all know Rudy's? He don't work. I don't think he worked there anymore. When I tell you that man was perfection from his motherfucking head to his toes. Oh! Girl, I used to go there just to get a barbecue sandwich just because. Just to see if he was going to be at work. I don't know where he at no more. Girl, he works at the barbecue place. I said, baby, you was too motherfucking fine to be working at the motherfucking barbecue place. <laughs> baby, you is too fine to be working at the barbecue shack. Hello? Girl, why is you here? Girl, you got all the ass, all the thighs. Girl, your waist is about this small. You look like you work out two times a day. He had locks down the here. I'm going to say he looked just like this man. Just like this man. He had locks, same skin color, same eyes. It wasn't him, though. It wasn't him. Girl, this is my man back in the day. Anyways, girl, all that being said, colorism still exists. Hello? Oh, Jesse, that's another one, girl. <laughs> but all that being said, colorism still exists, huh? Hmm. There he go.
I told you I knew his name was Alex something. I remember I went to his like Instagram page years ago. Let me see if he posts. Let's go to his Instagram page. I know I'm nosy. Girl, he had, oh, did he cut his school? Okay, he, oh, he really don't post anymore. Girl, the last time he posted was May the 22nd, 2023. He cut his locks off. Bitch, let me say something. Girl, if that thing, if that thing, bitch, let me say something. Mm, mm. I think he from New, I think he from Louisiana, girl. I think he from, I don't know, I guess he, did he stop modeling? He don't even post. What happened? He's so goddamn fine. Girl, that thing right there, child. Okay. Girl, Lenny Kravitz, girl. Let me see something, baby. Let me see. Baby, Lenny, not, baby, let me see. Lenny Kravitz is so goddamn fine. If Lenny knocked on my door right now, girl. <laughs> The way I would, the way I would hang up this phone in y'all face, <laughs> and not think twice about it. Lenny is like sixty years old. How old is Lenny? Lenny is fifty nine years old. He find himself too. I saw that name, Broderick Hunter. He finally spoke too. If you don't want him, I slam dunk him tonight. Hello? <laughs> sure. Hello? Showwood? Oh, the model had a drug problem? Is that what y'all said? Oh, that's sad. I hope he's okay. Girl, if you need somebody to drive him to rehab, tell him to call me. <laughs> tell him I'll take him. Okay. <laughs> Girl, that's not funny. Girl. I always acting thirsty over some nigga. <laughs> okay. Talking about now, 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 now I'm willing to drive the drug addicts to rehab. I will. Depending on how you look. <laughs> you need a ride? You need a ride? What what side of town are you going? You said you going to the Woodlands? Girl, the Woodlands like 45 minutes an hour away from me. Girl. You say you going to the Woodlands? Oh, that's right up the road. I can take you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, I don't need no gas money. No, you're fine. I can take you. Hello? Girl. Bitch, it's 5 o'clock. Girl, you know how long it takes to get to the Woodlands at 5 o'clock? Baby, it'll probably take you about two and a half hours to get to the Woodlands in traffic. Okay? I sure take them, though. <laughs> you said Megan Good, is that true? Okay? You know the girls are acting stupid over a nigga. Hello? <laughs> oh! Okay? The girls are so acting real dumb. Okay. Hmm. I'll be on my Megan Good shit. All of a sudden, you turn 40 and want to start acting stupid over a nigga. <laughs> okay. Hmm. Okay. Okay, good boy. <laughs> Good boy said no ma'am. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Anyways. So I think the phone is my thing there. Let me see something. Oh child. Anyways, I ain't want shit. That's all I wanted. Oh. 
<laughs> you got me tripping, stumbling, tripping cause I'm falling in love. <laughs> Girl, shout out to Fergie. You got me tripping, hey, stumbling, hey, <laughs> yes. Funny cause I'm falling in love. Okay, girl. Your smile. <laughs> ah! Oh! Yeah. Okay. Mmm. <laughs> yeah, so funny. Anyway, that's all I wanted, y'all. I ain't know this was. I ain't know this was gonna turn into a PBS special, honey. Shout out to everybody, though, girl. Love, you know what, girl? We, I, I just, you know, we all got some work to do. You know, we were all born into this world. We were all taught the same things. Um, we were all exposed, not exposed to the same things, but girl, when it comes to when it comes to race, like we were all taught the same things. You know what I'm saying? And. Either you choose to realize that a lot of the shit that they taught us was bullshit, okay? Um, and you have to just kind of buck at the system. You know what I'm saying? And you have to realize that some of this shit is, you know, this shit, you know, a lot of that bullshit they taught us was, was, was bullshit. Um, but, you know, we love everybody. I don't mind conversations, you know. We learning and unlearning. There we go, Bonnie. Yes, we learning and unlearning, girl. That's it. Girl, I got a little vodka. Girl, I'm drinking vodka tonight. Girl, I'm back on my, girl, I'm back on my vodka tip. Um, it was a lie. It was all a lie. Okay, shout out to Carly Red. Um, we just learning and unlearning, right? And that's just what it comes down to. Even me sometimes, I go back and I start thinking like, you know, like you'll have like ignorant thoughts that come across and you be like, and I, but I, I try and clock myself like, girl, you know, that's ignorant. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Girl, you know, that's it. You know that, you know, you're wrong, girl. So it is what it is, you know. That's all I got. I want something to eat now. Girl, what are we going to talk about? I ain't got nothing else to talk about. Oh, Papa, those sound good. Unlike Simone Whitmore, hello. I need to go in this kitchen and fix me a salad and sit my ass down somewhere. Oh, child, here y'all go. Did you talk about Candace comment about light skinned kids? Girl, I ain't talk about it. I talked about it with my friend. I talked about it. <laughs> I don't want to. I ain't gonna bring nobody into this conversation. But I talked about it with one of my friends. Friend, you still in the comments? I don't know if he's still here or not. He probably left. Good boy, you got some chicken. Good boy, you. Good boy, you got some chicken. Oh. I know, girl. I told y'all when I drink, I get hungry. I told y'all that. Didn't I tell y'all? All about the other girls. When I drink, girl, I get hungry. Oh. Oh, good boy, you cooking chicken? What kind of chicken you cooking? What pe what you cooking? Chicken strips? Oh, I got some. Oh, I, I, I got some. I, I got I got something in the kitchen I can cook. I got some chicken nuggets. I'm gonna make me some chicken nuggets. <laughs> okay. Candace want her kids to look like her. Nothing wrong with that. <laughs> I think some people purposely. <laughs> girl, let me show. I I, I don't want to talk about it. I don't. 
I'm, I don't want to talk about it. 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 Gabor, what you cooking? I know Gabor hear me talking. Gabor. Oh, okay. So he oh, so he don't want to talk no more. Okay. <laughs> so he don't hang he so he don't want to talk. Okay. He got me tripping. I saw that picture of Simone and Cecil that freak Nick. Simone put her business out there before y'all went. So, oh, girl, Simone, girl, Simone did. Simone did what the girls are supposed to do, baby. Simone put her picture out there on the World Wide Web before y'all could go looking. Huh? Okay? Simone said Simone did exactly what you supposed to do. Let me spill my own tea before y'all nosy motherfuckers go start looking. Talking about Doctor Simone was that freak, Nick? I was. Okay, I was with my man. Okay. So I don't need y'all to go start looking for nothing. You're trying to dig up pictures and shit. So but Dr. Simone did exactly what you're supposed to do. Tell her business before y'all try to tell it before her. Okay? Dr. Dr. Simone was that freak Nick. She posted a picture on, I think, her, I think it was on her Instagram page. I think that I think people purposely misunderstood her too. I really feel like that's what people did. I think that people purposely misunderstood Candace so they could read her. <laughs> I think that's what a lot of them, what y'all did. I really do think that. She said what she said. I don't think she was in the um I don't think she was in the documentary, no. I don't know. She could have been, I don't know. I didn't watch the documentary. Exact the reaction to Candace is always it's always overboard. It is. Oh my nose. And what else is going on, okay? Oh, Rashida was in it? Oh, Cecil was in the documentary? Oh, okay. I will say this much. I'll say this much. One thing I did, one thing I, I feel like sometimes Candace, depending on the environment that she's in, depending on the interviewer, I think that sometimes she does kind of get too comfortable and the way that things come across, she kind of, kind of says it kind of like flipping. And like, I don't think that she, I think that if she was sitting down with, I don't know, I think that she would have went more into, she would have worded it differently. But the way that she started out, I was just like, oh, girl. Y'all know I don't think Candace won't kids anyways, girl. I don't think Candace won't kids. I don't. I don't think Candace won't kids. I don't think, I don't think, um, <laughs> uh, I was about to say Gabor. Gabor don't want no kids. Not Gabor. What's up? What's up? Uh, Quad. I don't think Quad want kids. I don't think Candace want no kids. I'm looking at this microphone. That's all I'm saying. She's 37. She needs to figure it out. Girl. I mean, I know the girls are having kids at 65 years old now, but I'm just saying. 
Okay. Quiet. I don't think quiet. I don't think. <laughs> Let me shut up. I think it is hard for women to say. I think it's hard for anyone to say that. I remember one time I, I worked at Nordstrom. I remember me telling some of my coworkers that I did not want kids. Now, mind you, I mean, this don't mean nothing. But I remember telling my coworkers that I don't want kids. They told me I was selfish. It was a straight girl and a straight boy, both black. They told me that I was selfish because I said I did not want kids. So I, so the point I'm trying to make is I know the reaction that I got once I had a conversation with some people. So I know that for women, I think for women, for those who don't want kids, I think it's hard for them to come out and say they don't want kids. Because as a woman, they say you're supposed to want kids. Did I say 47? Now, Candace might want kids, and I just don't know. I don't think she wants kids, but she might. I mean, she says she do, girl. I guess she do. But so I get how some women, they just can't come out and say they don't want kids. So they'll just lie and say, I want kids. No, damn well, you probably don't. You know what I'm saying? Right. <laughs> you said that okay. You saw that haircut, girl. That girl, that, that haircut had all the girls in the show cold. Right, right, Bonnie. Exactly. Child, I won't worry about them people, child. I don't want no fucking kids. <laughs> Girl, I got my, I got three nieces. That's good enough for me. Hello. I don't know. Kwai was crying. I don't know what you was watching. Girl, what what uh Phaedra over there, girl, fan and quad? <laughs> I think Candace will have kids with her second husband, okay? You know the first you know the first you the, you know they say your first marriage is always your is always your practice marriage. <laughs> oh I don't think she do either. Ken, like, and that's what I'm saying. Like Kenya, when Kenya had her child, Kenya had her child because I felt like Kenya one was a woman of a particular age and she had to hurry up because the clock because the shop was about to close. And I also think in Kenya's head, Kenya wanted to do it the right way. You know what I'm saying? Once Kenya found a husband, Kenya had her baby. Mm-hmm. I always said that people always forcing baby dolls. Girl, don't don't even Bonnie, don't even get me into that conversation, girl. I had a conversation with my brother-in-law and my sister about that. You know, I really don't buy my um I really don't buy my nieces um dolls. I don't. Why buy them dolls? I don't buy those, I don't I don't I'll buy them dolls. I don't buy them like babies. I'm gonna tell you. I'm gonna tell you what. I'm, this is just me. This is just the way my mind works. It's not yours. <laughs> it's you know not yours, Bonnie. But I'm just. I'm talking in general. It's not. This is just the way that I think. Okay. <laughs> but I remember when my niece was born, Tatum, and I remember I had bought her 
a baby doll, a baby. Because that's what they say you do. When the girls are born, you go buy baby dolls, <laughs> right? And I bought her a baby doll. And I remember one day I had walked in a room. I think she was asleep. And the baby doll was right beside her while she was asleep. And I looked and I said, this is so fucking strange. Yeah. I said, why does this baby have a baby? <laughs> now, I bought the doll. now, I bought the baby. <laughs> okay. But I just thought it was strange. And I like to, I like to people watch. I like to look at people. I like to see what's going on. And I started to realize that when I would go, I, I remember one day I was at work and I remember seeing this little, little this little white girl push, push a stroller. The girl was probably four years old. She had a stroller and a baby. Hey, Laura. And I just started to see anytime I saw a child with a stroller and a baby, it was always a girl. I've never seen, I saw one boy. This was at Lowe's. I still remember on Westheimer and Kirkwood. It was a white woman. I assume she was the mama. She had a boy and a girl. They both had strollers. Both. That was the only time I ever seen it. And that was probably... I was coming from getting my hair cut and I remember I stopped girl, I stopped at this restaurant and I was eating in the parking lot. Girl, just hungry. And I was in the parking lot and that's how I saw it. But anyways, so I just remember always just seeing girls with strollers and I never saw boys with strollers. And I was like, this, oh, this is just the way my mind works. I was like, oh, this is what we do. We start the motherhood journey as soon as the little girls are born. We're letting the girls know your role in life, you're going to be a mother and you're going to take care of the kids. Because why is it, why, why are y'all not buying the boys babies and strollers? Why not? Why? <laughs> Because if, why would you not just buy them a stroller and a baby? Because they shouldn't walk around with a stroller and a baby? Because that's not what men, a boy, that's not what men, like, but y'all got the little girl. That's what, the, that's what she's going to eventually do when she's grown, right? Because that's the goal. So what's the goal for the little boys? Because y'all about the little boys, G.I. Joes and Tonka trucks, but y'all don't never buy the little boys strollers and baby dolls and at that point i never bought another baby doll now i'll buy them like a barbie doll you know what i'm saying like the little, the little lol dolls and all this stuff but i don't buy any of my nieces um baby dolls and i remember having a conversation with my brother-in-law and my brother-in-law felt the same way he feels as though people push motherhood onto girls he doesn't like it either so I don't buy my niece's baby dolls. Everything when it comes to boys is about cars. Like, yes, Bonnie. War cars, football being loud. They don't, y'all don't push fatherhood onto kids, onto little boys. Y'all push motherhood onto little girls. Why the fuck is a three-year-old? Why the fuck is my niece who's probably girl a month old with a baby beside her? <laughs> Why the fuck are little girls walking around here at four and five pushing strollers and babies? Because y'all ain't got y'all sons walking around here pushing strollers and babies. Y'all just don't. And we know that's the truth. Y'all know I'm not making the shit up. Why? Because fatherhood is not pushed onto little boys. We are literally training these girls to grow up to know, to tell them, this is what you are going to be. So then when you have little girls who grow up 
to be grown when we're going to skip all the teenage pregnancies. Okay? But when you have little girls who grow up to be grown women and you have those women who don't want to have kids, it's looked at why the fuck don't you want to have kids? Because you're a woman. You're supposed, you're supposed to want motherhood. That's, that, that's why you're here. That's why we trained you. That's why when you were a month, a month, a month old, you had a baby doll beside you. Why the fuck don't you want to be a mother? That's the whole purpose of your ass being here. Okay. That's what I feel. That's just what I feel. That's just what I feel. But yeah. So I don't buy my knee. I, I, I haven't bought Bailey or Sloan a baby doll. That was my last doll. Baby doll. Again, I still buy them like little LOL. You know, the, you know, them LOL dolls, all that shit they be like. Um, but a baby, absolutely not. No, it's not coming from me. Now, whether they come from somebody else, that's on them. But I'm telling you, I'm not spending my money on no baby doll. <laughs> OK. You want a Barbie doll? Oh, OK. Do you want an LOL doll? OK. A baby doll? No. Absolutely not. A stroller? Absolutely not. I'm not getting it out with my goddamn money. <laughs> so, yeah. <sighs> I'm just sad, girl. It's just like my mind work. So, yeah. And I don't ever want... Mm hmm Okay. Okay. Oh. Oh, girl, y'all already know, girl. Anytime the mic go out, honey. That means it's almost time to go. Okay. Anyways, that's it. What else y'all got to talk about? You're right. It literally is like on some real shit. Not to even go back into the not to even go back into the conversation. But good night. But it really is training little girls from the time that they're brought into this world. We give them baby dolls. We give them kitchen sets. We give them brooms and mops, and we tell them to play house. <laughs> just, 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 just think about it. I'm just, I'm just saying. Just think about it. Just think about it. Just think about it. When it's the girls, we give them baby dolls. We give them kitchen sets. We give them brooms and mops, and they play house and they play kitchen. And they take care of the baby. But if you give a little boy a kitchen set, all of a sudden he gonna be he gonna grow up to be gay. Why you bought your son a kitchen set? He gonna be a little punk. You don't buy little boys kitchen sets because that's not what you're raising little boys to do. You're raising the women to be the mattress, the maid, and the mule. Sorry. That's what's going on. And girl, we're not raising no mattresses made with mules over here, baby. Not on my motherfucking car. Not on my motherfucking watch. <laughs> okay? <laughs> Shit. Mm hmm. Yeah. And it comes, like, I've seen women online talk about little boys having kitchen sets. Even though, this is the gag. Even though, <laughs> girl, um, the culinary world is a male-dominated world. Every time you turn on a food network, it's some straight white man who's a multimillionaire, got all types of restaurants around the goddamn world, making all the goddamn money. That be the gag. That's the gag. Y'all don't want y'all little boys to have kitchen sets, but then y'all wonder why the boys grow up. Listen to this. 
The boys eventually grow up. The black men, the most they can do is be an IG chef. Look on Instagram and see how many niggas you see. Now they can cook their ass off. They can cook their ass off. Look on IG and see how many straight men you see selling plates. Maybe if you would have just tapped into your son's skill, skill set, he could probably be girl on a goddamn food network, girl, multimillionaire, girl, a restaurant in New York, one in Las Vegas, one in Paris, one in Barcelona. That'd be the real gag. The niggas, they on IG selling plates because they finally realize, oh, I can cook and it don't make me gay. The white men, they own the restaurants. Y'all better start letting y'all kids tap, tap into their motherfucking skill sets. <laughs> to be something that they're happy and that they're good at. And like I said, girl, that's a male-dominated field. Like a lot of the goddamn industries, if we're going to be honest about it. I watch the Food Network all the time. I can probably count on one hand how many black chefs I've seen on the Food Network. <laughs> okay? It's always Bobby Play and the other white ones, okay? Who got all the goddamn money, all the goddamn restaurants, and then as soon as I can get on Instagram, all the niggas is selling is selling plates outside the restaurant. Food be looking good as hell, too. But child, it is what it is. Look at um, what's that white man guy? They say God just they say God just signed a hundred million dollar contract. That's what the word on the street is. God just signed word word about the wrong thing. They say God signed a hundred million dollar contract, girl, a hundred million. Girl. And y'all worried about y'all kids being gay? Girl, fuck being gay. You need to be worried about your kid being rich and possibly buying your ass a house. Buying you some new cabinets, okay? Girl, buying you a new car. Y'all worry about the wrong goddamn thing. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> okay. Oh, guys, homophobic. Oh, child. Shit, okay. Hmm. And then on some real shit, not to even go into a whole goddamn old spiel, but then y'all wonder why some of y'all sons grow up and can't do the basic shit in life. I can't stand a sorry ass man. Then y'all wonder why y'all sons can't grow up and do something like, girl, fix a hot meal for themselves. I know how to go in there and, girl, clean up. <laughs> girl, I know how to, girl, do laundry. How you a grown ass man walking around here with your chest fucking out and you can't even feed your fucking self? How you a grown ass man walking around here talking about girl? I'm a productive, a provider, a leader. You can't even do a fucking decent load of laundry, girl. How about you a grown ass man and not don't have to do the basic, basic shit that a grown person usually knows how to do, girl? Bye. Anyway, don't know about groceries. I know, like, no shade. I know it's a joke. I know it's a joke. But I think some of y'all be dead ass serious. <laughs> like, I hate when I see those things, like those skits on Instagram, where like, I remember I saw this one skit of this woman. It was a poster board. <laughs> and she had, to, she, she cut out all the pictures of the items that she needed on the poster board. So he would know exactly what to get when he went to the grocery store. And I was just like, girl, if you got to do all that to, for a grown ass man, girl, what is you good for? <laughs> I know it was a joke. At least I hope it was a joke. I know it was a joke, but it's like, ugh. When I see those skits of those women who have to give step-by-step -step instructions of my husband, my man having to go to the grocery store, like, ugh, that's not even cute to me. How do you a grown
grown ass man that don't even know how to go to, go to the grocery store and pick out laundry detergent. You don't know what the fuck tied is? You don't know what gain is? You don't know what arm and hammer is? You don't know how to pick out a loaf of bread? You don't know how to go get eggs and open up the carton to make sure that none of the eggs are cracked? You don't know how to look at an expiration date to make sure that the milk you're getting ain't about to expire tomorrow? Y'all don't know how to do shit like that? And I just be looking like, oh, this is so gross and lazy and sorry. <laughs> Good for 12, okay? Like, it's just crazy to me. Like, I just, I'm like, ugh. Like, oh, this is so gross. This is gross and it's sorry. <laughs> and, but the real gag is, even though some of y'all be joking, I think that some of y'all be telling the truth, too. It is what it is, child. I think a lot of them don't be joking either. Anyway, y'all, it's time for me to get up off this. Y'all been on here too long. It's almost midnight. I've been on this motherfucker since 8 30 p.m. Okay? It's almost midnight. I've been on this motherfucker since 8 30 p.m. Okay? Girl, I can't never get on here again off like I'm supposed to. All right, y'all. Listen, thank y'all so much for watching. I had a good, 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 good time. I'll probably go live again sometime next week. We'll come on tomorrow. Oh, girl. Potomac. Girl, tomorrow is the Potomac finale, season finale, y'all. Then the, then the week after that is the uh, reunion. <laughs> All right, y'all. Anyways, y'all have a good night. Thank you so much for watching. I'll talk to y'all later. Bye, y'all.